The Dumb Zone through the years has been a beacon of light in the DFW Metroplex, taking you to such destinations as Above Dan's Garage, the Alamo Draft House, Deuce Robinson's Family Farm, Paris, and several rich people's homes. There's always plenty of camp spins, <sighs> yeah, on the Dumb Zone podcast. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like Drop Beth, Ted Emmerich, Haralabob Valgaris, Julie Dobbs, Sarah Heppola, Quincy Carter's voicemail, and former city council. Council member Philip Kingston have appeared on the Dumb Zone podcast. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the Dumb Zone podcast, a no puppet production coming to you live via tape from the heart of DFW. All right, 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 all I'm Dan McDowell. I'm Jay Kemp. I'm Blake Jones. Little hang time there, bud. He likes to leave people uh, wanting you know, a little. In anticipation, yeah. yeah. Will he be there? <laughs> <laughs> and he is. And Video Man's here as well. As uh, well as intern Rachel. And we're in our uh, studio today. That's why Video Man's here. He doesn't like to join the den. He's got more important matters to handle on those days. Does he? He's Again, got, everybody's got bits except he got me. A side gig. Yeah. Never heard everybody's so much got a side gig. My whole life. And he's busy pulling drops. He's yeah. pulling drops. He's setting up. I don't know. Right wing stuff. <laughs> You're the sucker. <laughs> You're the loser. He's scouting RVs. Oh, yeah. Scouting RVs. We have found an RV. Oh, yeah? So unless there's a Hail Mary and we get that private jet, because I will still accept that. You're never going to get it unless you don't start full-time saying PJ or Peach. Hmm. you got to prove that you're one of them. Yeah. That's Up tough to peach. do. Yeah, we would. I'm definitely look more like an RV guy. <laughs> Boy, truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> I'm not completely looking forward to the RV trip, but I'm going to be a very positive influence on the whole thing. Mark this down. Okay? July 2nd, he says he'll be a very positive influence on the whole thing. I am. So what's, also, day, what's day two of this trip? Check back in then. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'll, I'm also marking down he says he'll go on the RV. Yeah. Because I think there's a good chance he flies either out there or back. Ooh, guys, my back. Yes, and that's going to be it. Oh, His man. kids are too old to make up some bullshit on that front. Yeah. Lost that card, buddy. Mm-hmm. I know. Maybe one of them can get pregnant real quick. I was about to say it, but they're your kids, so <laughs> <laughs> kind of left it there for you. Hey, does the RV have a TV in it where I can hook up my Xbox? Yeah, we'll have a tournament, bro. Ooh. Well, we'll have to it. check and see if it's compatible with your Nintendo. Well, well NCAA? PS3, I've... Uh, Tiger Woods Golf. No. We're I'll, pl- I'll play some golf with you. We're working. You better we're not be bring, driving like 20 hours. You better not bring your clubs. No, but I'm bringing my Xbox. I can't believe how far we've fallen. We we're will be, be driving to camp. Under a month of NCAA. I'm going to be playing it. I'm, I'm going to stop being positive now. <sighs> Jesus Christ. It took three minutes. Anyway, I, I also... Um, By the way... I'm not on board with my, my new computer. What? <laughs> All the stuff's on the wrong side... I got it. I can't plug in here. I uh, you did warn him about and it's that. too. You know what? Here's the problem with the new Mac. Because I don't like dark mode. Oh yeah, you're a psychopath. On my phone, it, and it's it, not that. No, hold on. Before you start yelling at me, intern Rachel, during the show, it's not dark mode on the screen, but it's like the whole computer is dark mode. So if I'm just sitting in my office and I'm, I'm like, the whole thing is dark. Like, I, I think I made a mistake. Can you return it just because of the color? <laughs> I don't think you can. No, that would. But it works great. It's real fast. Yeah. I'm sorry. Lots of megabits per second. I'm sorry for your struggles. How's everybody doing on day two of the back nine? What's that mean? Dude, yesterday was Monday, July 1st. Oh, yeah. Oh. It was a Monday... The first of the month, first get, day of the second half of the. I'll you tell get you to what. 3, since steps everybody in? bitches about my water bottle every week, how about this? 
I'm gallon guy today. All right. I'm hydrating in the back half you of 2024. You are 20, such a douchebag. So that's how much you've drank so far today? No, I've already filled it up. You drank a whole gallon already? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I, th- I was going to scoreboard you. I've had a half gallon, and this is my you know, third quart. I got my Proud Boy summer cut. I know it's it's the haircut <laughs> in the gallon that yeah. does it. Hey, wait! Um, before we move any further, let's welcome the. We're in the studio, so we have guests and we have royalty in the studio. We have uh, two guests. Uh, you know them. We know them. We've known them a long time. We love them. It is uh, Mike Reiner and Julie Dobbs yeah. together Look again. At Look at us! Yeah. Look at us. Thank we you for introducing us. We can't keep talking without... Yeah, now you can just be I wanted to make fun of Jake's haircut and gallon of water. <laughs> I was we biting my tongue the whole right time. Away. Mostly the gallon of water. I like the haircut. Thank you. But it was the combination of both of the new things well, all at once. It was it, throwing me off a Dan little Dan made a big deal yesterday out of this is a rare opportunity. The first of the month is on a Monday, and it's the first day of the back half of the year. Okay, we still have lot. time that's to say... That's a lot. Think about it. The back nine of the year... The back half of the year, yeah. yeah it's perfect now, July if, 1st. Now, if January 1st was a Monday, uh-huh. that would be the perfect day to start your life anew. But, but Jake has but chosen. But I didn't. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Jake has chosen to start anew now. Okay. The, the first day of the rest of his life was yesterday, and look at him. Yeah. Look how great he looks. So it's like the give up New Year's Day kind of deal. Uh, I would say it's the effort. But we're saying, you know, when you start a diet. Yeah. You ever start a diet and you say, I'm going to start on the first of the month, and you're like, oh, wait, it's Thursday? Uh, uh, I mean, order a pizza a and get a couple yeah, beers. Yeah, it has to it's be a Monday. It's kind of like your New Year's do-over. Exactly. It all yeah. starts again. Right. It's a I, di- I divorced the first half of the year. <laughs> right. And now I'm upgrading at that position. That's the, the old you. Yeah. Okay. I was noticing the haircut, though. Yeah. I hadn't paid any attention to the gallon jug at all, but now <laughs> I, I, I see what you're doing there, and I do support it. You do? Yeah, I do. I do. Been Just- to a- don't bring rallies. it to the gym. Just don't bring it to the gym. Well, I don't go to the gym. I work out at home. Okay, I'm a psychopath. good. Psychopath. Okay, good. <laughs> he is a psychopath. Can't handle. The but I was noticing the, the haircut. Gym guy. Thank you. I guess you didn't really compliment it, but noticing it will have to suffice. <laughs> Can we give our gifts <laughs> a free uh, it is a there. tumbler? Is it that exists. what's in front of them there? Yeah. Look at that. Oh our our guests. Mike. Our guests. We gave them a free tumbler. How about that? Check that out. That's pretty sharp. You can use it as a spit cup. Yeah, you can. Perfect. Yeah. Most people just give you a koozie. That's right. If I were going on the RV, I would definitely take that. Yeah. And I would get a haircut like that. You know what else we're going to give you? I'll tell you right now. Oh. So, and I have to uh, admit something. This feels big. This does. I really don't know if I deserve this. I think you do. So, when when I was helping you move, Jake. Yep. Help. I didn't do. <laughs> you provided I, levity. I, I assembled some of the boxes. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize n- and nothing would be boxed up. It was a it was a bait and switch. It was like, hey, you want to help me move on Saturday? I didn't, but I said yes because it's Jake and I love Jake. Yeah. Did so he stand I, around and show you where shit should go, go? Actually, I didn't answer until he said Chappie will be there. I'm like, yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> so, um, but they didn't have anything boxed up. And so the whole, it was all boxing. And uh, so I was helping assemble the boxes. Anyway, I was carrying some stuff out of the uh, garage into the whatever, and I found this box, and it disgusted me because it was a box full of the accommodation. I know. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we were giving these away at our old job, and you had went and picked uh, up a whole box, but then you just put it in your garage and let it sit. And I thought, what a slacker. This guy, he was supposed to bring this up. We were going to give them away at remotes and all this, and he never did. He just put it in his garage, and he forgot about it. And I thought, man, on Monday, I'm going to call him out on this. I'm gonna, We're going to do it on the show and all this. And so what I did when I got home, I put it in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> And forgot about it. <laughs> and it's been sitting there for four months. <laughs> you know what's so funny about this? And so... The, <laughs> we did give a couple away at remotes, but the funniest part was I remember giving away the first three or four at Twin Peaks. So we're like at this restaurant, and we have this historical text 
Yeah. That encapsulates histories, uh, you know, of racism. It's one of the most important books ever written about our fair bird. Yeah. Without a like, doubt. You I'll might take, turn me on to it. I'll take some uh, Hot yeah. Wings Chandra, and then I'll flip through this uh, <laughs> this this uh, text about firebombing the ghetto. <laughs> You don't think that Venn diagram overlaps too much? <laughs> Twin Peaks and the accommodation. <laughs> Have you ever read it, Blake? Fans. <laughs> we gave a few away, but I got it was about weird. Seventy percent through, and then fell off. Why? Not because it's not great. I don't. Why know. did you fall off? I, I, no I, steamy love scene. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> yeah. Blake, Blake reads romance novels now. <laughs> oh, he yeah. does. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have Blake's book. What got you into that? Man, you've really changed since I saw you last. Oh yeah, you think so? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, to oh. each of our guests now, uh, <laughs> Rob, we will not only give a tumbler, but a copy of the accommodation. <laughs> stuff from your garage. You ought to take it out to training camp. Not stuff from my garage. That to your stuff, guests. Important things. stuff that couldn't That's find a good idea. garage or your garage. Bring it to training camp? Yeah, and we're like, hey, you know, uh, you might not be from Dallas, but if you want to know something about the history of the uh, oppressive nature of the white man in the city, okay. welcome to Dallas. Do we have enough room on the RV for this box of books? <laughs> okay. All right. They got an RV. I All know. Right. They're fancy. So, hey, uh, welcome are. to our studio, guys. Actually, Julie has been here before. How's an RV fancy? And the uh, reason- it's something. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not. You're moving and shaking, man. You're going places. At 35 miles like, an hour. Like, literally. <laughs> yeah, y'all should call up Nate Newton. You know he drives every year to training camp. Uh, I got a couple priors. <laughs> I don't really know if I want- <laughs> A couple what? Priors. I don't really know if I want Nate being the. <laughs> hey, he's uh, a changed man. Get to he's California, you get that. That's just the time when three he, strikes you're out rule, hey, and I could be in change. trouble. <laughs> now let's uh, let's mule some stuff. Oh man. Anyway, um, the re- Julie's been here before, and mm-hmm. the last time she was here, we played some uh, some uh, of my old appearance on a cable access tv show in dayton ohio and we're going to have that guy on the show today i can't even handle we'll teach you who he is in just a little bit mike um i can't wait and we'll teach everybody who doesn't know what i'm talking about in just a little bit but we do have some today and twitter to start today's program we do Mm. the dumb zone presents today and twitter it's kick ass open man all right, the first one, just our uh, our appetizer here. It's pretty short, but Texas has been, the University of Texas has been blowing it out big over the last week with their SEC entry celebrations. I don't even know what's going on, but ESPN was down there. Mm-hmm. They were at OU, and they've got like Schloss on, and they've got the AD. I'm shocked McConaughey wasn't there <laughs> uh, to vibe with CDC. They sent Laura Rutledge over there to go celebrate. Yeah, SEC and, lady. Um, they had Pitbull, oh, which good. of course resulted in a, a death at their concert. Mm. Crowd rush. That's People too were bad. So excited about Pitbull, <laughs> but they there also was only a Pitbull fan. Pitbull fan. Mm-hmm. That's right. But they also did this, and I'm just blown away by the decadence of college athletics these days, and really just colleges in general, because tuition has like a linear trajectory to the moon as far as how much it costs relative to the purchasing power of the dollar. It's never slowing down seemingly but they can do stuff like this Uh, i saw this on twitter and it is uh according to the university of texas the first ever uh, drone show with pyrotechnics ever in america look at this so it's the big longhorn head spinning hovering in the sky which is really incredible drone shows i know i hate them but i I don't even get it it's a lot less exciting to me than a firework what if I gave you... But now this one has fireworks attached to the drone, and it looks like the Longhorn logo is taking off. So those like are a, all little drones? Or it like looks a like rocket. a wiener with wings. Doesn't it yeah. just kind of hanging? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or you could just like even look at the, the top parts of the horns and think of that as like the V thing that hot guys have, and the dick is just hanging down. Yeah. Cock. Yeah. So the Longhorn in general, you guys are equating to private parts. You've thought that this whole time? I've never actually thought of that. Much now, like when Dan pointed out that there's... I've driven on Chisholm Trail my entire life, yeah. but I never thought of it as a uh, a sexual thing. Yeah, I heard that. I cringed a bit. <laughs> he'll, he'll do that. Look behind you. Do I need to? We got do a I street sign. To? Chisholm Trail. Oh, okay. Right there. It's beautiful. Okay, well, if you think you're cringing <laughs> the now... The Chisholm Trail is often behind you. 
Okay. <laughs> that sounds really dirty. You're with your lady. What's the? Uh, I, I don't. Explain what does that this mean? to Mike. Well, um, it might have been a term that wasn't introduced <laughs> until after your era, but in the parlance of our times, people would refer to the male reproductive product as mm. jism. Okay. So when Dan saw the word jism, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he immediately seized on that and said it's the chism trail. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So speaking of cringe, Julie, the second Julie one here. Laugh drop. Uh, <laughs> I as, like it. The Democratic machine is in. F <laughs> the Democratic machine is in full panic mode after Joe Biden's uh, disastrous debate performance. Yeah, and Wasn't so that bad. <laughs> I thought history, he was pretty sharp. History will tell. It looked like he was made of clay. And uh, <laughs> never heard so much malarkey in my whole life. So they're sending uh, Kamala Harris out there to try to do and uh, relate to the kids because he's completely lost the young person vote because most of them don't remember how horrible horrible it was whenever president trump was president trump oh let's get kamala out there that'll <laughs> okay so we send what kamala, good idea. kamala to comedy central and i just want you guys to watch this and tell me if you were going to vote or if you're somebody who wants biden removed and you're like i'll vote for kamala watch this and tell me if you feel the same after comedy that. Central? You had no, no it wasn't i was wrong all. uh i thought i saw the watermark that said cc that was from the bet awards oh okay yeah but yeah as they say girl they not like us uh and i know that Probably she's. I bet she actually doesn't talk like that. She's sort of dressing up for the politics. She's doing a like a reverse code switch, but she's still using the language to relate. Yeah. But she sounds like a robot. Mm -hmm. I'm out here in these streets. Uh, you know, I'm out here <laughs> in these streets. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. I'm going. I'm voting. Seem like a Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. I might sit this whole vote out. No, you're not. Shut up. I'm a protest. No, you're not. They have to give us a little something better, though, don't they? What was the last time they you don't. voted? They don't have to, and they won't, so just bite that. Last and... time I voted? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Probably for Jan McDowell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing her in. Hi! <laughs> we should get her in here. Let's get Jan McDowell in here. That's a okay, great idea. So See my... if she has any tattoos or piercings. <laughs> my final clip. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> the bikini girl. <laughs> <laughs> My final clip, uh, I'm really glad Julie is here for this because I did not watch this show, but it was sort of in that WB UPN era with Gossip Girl, and uh, every girl in my high school seemingly watched it or watched it and binged it in college. I'm speaking of One Tree Hill. Mm -hmm. Is this a show you've ever seen? Yeah, I watched it a bit. Okay. You know what these are, Dan. This format. Mm -hmm. So probably all... From the uh, coaching tree of Dawson's Creek. So <laughs> I had heard about this and I think I'd even seen it before, but it had been a long time, maybe 10 years. And somebody was doing a list yesterday on Twitter. I saw it. You know what it is, don't you? <laughs> don't say anything. I won't. So it was the top 10 most iconic moments uh, in tv history now clearly this person was my age or around my age because it wasn't like they had anything from mash <laughs> or you know dallas it was all shows from probably 95 on and like game of thrones and uh breaking seinfeld bad. even breaking bad and then you know some of these schlocky wb upn shows and one of them was one tree hill so the clip i'm about to play for you is apparently the bad guy in the show, the guy who's he's a dad, but he's kind of a jerk. Do I have this right so far? Yeah, sounds right. For a couple seasons, he had been waiting for a heart transplant. Okay. So he finally got a heart, and this is the scene when they're bringing him his heart, and he's about to go into heart surgery. Right. Five, two, four. Dr. Pastor. Got a box of organs. <laughs> Oh no, the guy carrying the box of organs <laughs> slipped and there's a heart on the floor. His transplant heart is on the floor. Oh my god! There was a dog in there and he's eating it! Oh my god. <laughs> and then that and then guy. No one stops the dog! No, no one. And then his son looks at him like, you deserve that. There are this is the beginning of the show? There are credits. It was either beginning or end. <laughs> oh I think it was an end. It was like a cliffhanger moment. Have you seen that show? No, I didn't see oh, okay. it live or anything, but I saw this on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs>
That's not a sketch. That's not a joke. That is a dramatic moment. That was moment. in a show. That is a dramatic moment in a television show where somehow— like, I, First of all, you just carry a human heart in a in cooler. A, like a, a styrofoam, like styrofoam 7-Eleven Right, that cooler. looks like the cheap, the cheap cooler. You would <laughs> yeah. buy a nicer cooler than that. And then it's, it's the like guy's dog leash. Somehow there's a dog in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, the dog is oh. leashed at that point. And the guy's like, oh, my God, somebody pick up my heart. Yo— so heart pick up my heart with the ground. So basically, also yeah. the heart isn't wrapped in anything. No, no, it's just it's on just ice, like a tall, like a tall boy. Ice. Yeah, it's like a six pack. I'm and the guy's like, "Can someone heart. pick up my heart?" And the dog's and like, thought, "I'll take that." You know what? I'll let go of the dog's leash now. <laughs> <laughs> Looks he like he's got a heart. plastic tube sticking out of the top of it, too. Yeah, it's an artery, I and think. The guy, yeah. And he just, uh, he runs down the hall and oh. nobody stops the dog. <laughs> Nobody's like, hey, wait, no. no, 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 no Everybody lady. There's a nurse in there who gives the, like, concerned, hmm. And then Nobody even the moved. guy reading next to the sun is kind of looks, but then he's like, eh, <laughs> "You could back to the- tackle the dog and get the heart back and rinse it off." And the guy that fell must have suffered a severe concussion because he doesn't move the entire. No, time. yeah, he's like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get up like, "Oh man, oh, where's yeah. the heart I was carrying?" Yeah. I think he was just stunned. You know, he's like, "I didn't see that coming." Why and they that- run the heart to the guy who's waiting for the heart, yeah. not like into, into the, the operating room. room. Yeah, yeah, he's in the here. <laughs> no back door. It's no. Okay, so go to the writer's room for this scene. Okay, so I read an oral history about this scene that the ringer did. And apparently they would throw just wild ideas out because it's monotonous. They did like 20 seasons of 20 episodes. Or not 20 uh, seasons. 20, but, yeah, yeah. But they would do a ton of episodes per season. And they're like, we would just get bored. And we wanted to punish the bad guy in the worst way we could. We wanted him to have some pain. And... uh they were like, we came up with this, and we could not believe they approved it. Oh, my gosh. And then they said they had to find the heart that looked the most similar to a human heart. They settled on pig. They uh, had to go through two, at least two dogs because the first dog was not interested at all. <laughs> In the heart? Like, yeah. They're like, I think his name was, I can't remember. They're like, Dexter, eat the heart. Eat the heart. And he's just not interested. And they said that the set that day was just hysterical. Like they, <laughs> they had they had tons of backup hearts because everybody everyone keep la- kept laughing every time the heart fell out on the floor. That's great. That's so yeah. gross. So there you go, One Tree Hill. Man, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I wish I'd have watched that show now. <laughs> Let me hit this gallon. Oh. From the wonderful world of sports, radio sports. Sports follow-up. So, Mike, did someone hit for the cycle two days ago? Yeah, they did, and I can't think of who it is right now. Blake? Wyatt? That would be our wonder boy from Florida. Oh, yes. Wyatt Langford. Okay. Yes, Wyatt's cafeteria was open. Just a little follow-up <laughs> from BL, frequent, frequent contributor to the program. He uh, he noted that you said yesterday that Wyatt Langford was the first Rangers rookie to ever hit for the cycle. Uh oh. How was I wrong? Uh-oh. Not so. Uh-oh. Sounds ominous. Oh, you know this? Yeah. Go ahead. Odeby McDowell did it. Ah yes. In 1985. Or as I like to say, Odeby Young again, McDowell. Oh, uh-huh. Tommy, Tommy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a knee slapper. Well, it's stuff like that. That's why he has the highest scoring team in the fantasy baseball league. Because of knowledge like that. BL? Yeah. Are you joking? Like, is he no, he's, at the bottom? Oh, nope. he's doing great? Yeah, he's great. Rugne- Blake, Blake is my GM. Rugned's brother, Rugned, not having a great year. I haven't even, I, I looked at it a couple weeks ago, but, yeah. you know, we're kind of like the Rangers Yep. themselves, not having a great year. Um, You know, we didn't do a good job of introducing these two, and I know both of us forgot to write them the intros. Um. But if you don't know, Mike Reiner, uh, you know, longtime Dallas Fort Worth media member. Do you think we have to do this? I don't know. You you don't think so at all? I don't. Mm. Should this have been discussed beforehand? I think so. No, I, th- I think you're know. doing just fine without this. Don't you feel like I need to just say, Mike Reiner? Yeah, I'm with you. Is current? I, I wanted to lead to where he currently is, uh, because he worked with us for many years on the ticket. Then he went and. Uh, uh, Started up a new radio station, or at least they built a new radio station around him that uh, didn't go as well as the ticket, called The Freak. And now he is in our world. 
the world of digital broadcasting, podcasting, YouTube stuff. Yes. And uh, where can people find you now? Um, they can find us on Patreon. The name of it is Your Dark Companion. Okay. And uh, I would appreciate it greatly if you'd check it out. See, we just want to give him a little. That part Thank you. I appreciate. The he was born in Oak Cliff, to... <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> and Julie Dobbs, we've done it before, so you don't need to know where she. Yeah. Is. Oh, okay. No, go I'm... ahead and check out her uh, podcast as well. Mm-hmm. The Mom Game. It was filmed today, and you know that because she did her hair and has lipstick. Oh yeah, she looks <laughs> <That's> great. <right. laughs> Y'all awesome. remember the podcast days? Yes. Back when I'd pop into the ticket and actually had put a little effort into my appearance. <laughs> They knew we had a podcast day that day. So we all know sports mayor is Eric Johnson. Did you realize we have sports judge? Is it Clay Jenkins? Yesterday, Clay mm. Jenkins at 2.31 tweeted. Actually, it says 2.31 Eastern time. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? What? He tweeted, boom! <laughs> Free agent... At Clay Thompson, so he has to tag him. No, no, no. This is a copy and paste. Oh, he copied and pasted? Why would the time be on there? Like, what is he? I don't know. He okay. plans to join the Mavs on a three-year, $50 million contract with a player option for the final year. This is just a guy that doesn't know how to quote. So, yeah. Sources yeah. told quote ESPN's three. Adrian Wojnarowski. tried to Wojnarowski. pull off his own. Yeah. The real giveaway here is that he spelled Wojnarowski right. Yeah. Yeah, this is a copy paste job yes. right here. And who says their sources? <laughs> yeah, uh, right? if, if you're just saying, but yeah, so yes, we now have sports judge. He added boom, but that's about it. We've had sports mayor, sports governor, governor sports sure. judge now. And- well, don't forget uh, sports. Uh, I do. I admit it. I love sports. <laughs> sports. Uh, was it the chief of police? <laughs> yes. Somebody. Oh yeah, they somebody had a bet had with a bet, uh, Vancouver, right? Not Vancouver. Edmonton. Edmonton. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Got to get in on it. Anyway, that kind of happened while we were recording yesterday, live to tape. Um, but, you know, now you've had a day to think about it. Look at this whole thing. Marvel, I think, at what Nico Harrison has done just in the past couple years. If you look at you have uh, Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, Grant Williams... Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Green, Derek Jones, Davis Bertans. Oh, Davis. And he turned all that into Kyrie, Clay Thompson, Derek Lively, P.J. Washington, Gafford, Najee Marshall now, Quentin Grimes. Grimes. I don't know what that is. Well, it we'll could see. be very good. You but know. that's an amazing – obviously, a lot of the assets are gone as well, right? <clears throat> no yeah. second-round picks anymore, no first-round picks. But yeah, They're going for it now. I was skeptical for a long time of him. Oh, I think all of us were. We had him on pretty soon out of the gates, and it did not appear that he had engaged in any media training because he answered everything way too honestly, and uh, you're not supposed to do that. Well, I was always suspect because they say that the main bullet point for hiring him was that he knew everybody. A relationship with the stars. Yes, he knew everybody and had no kind of uh, meaningful experience in any any anybody's front office or anything like that but he knew everybody and he could talk free agents into coming here yeah and i guess in hindsight you should probably just look at the guy has phenomenal organizational and communication skills because that's what it would take to be an executive for two decades at nike so that's pretty much what you need whenever you're a general manager or a VP in any company. Yeah. You got to have organizational skills and you got to be able to communicate to those you're working with and those who are working underneath you. And I guess. Which weren't really showing up early, especially when he and Jason Kidd seemed to differ on. At least JaVale McGee. What big Christian. man they should be yeah. signing. Yeah. Uh, like Jason Kidd wanted JaVale McGee. He wanted Christian Wood. It None of it ever worked out at all. And you're wondering what, what what's going on here? Like, because when he was hired, you know, did he. Did Jason Kidd mandate he was with him or vice versa? Or, you know, it it just didn't seem to all make sense. But everything looks great right now, man. Yeah, you got to give them full marks for what they've been able to do over the last year and a half. How about for the first time ever, you're kind of hearing Clay Thompson was offered more to go elsewhere. 
And that elsewhere is the Lakers. That's insane. Yeah. His dad played there. It's the Lakers. They offered more years and more money, and he came to Dallas. It's pretty awesome. And I don't think, you know, if you listen to the way McMahon was talking about it and writing about it, apparently Kyrie was a huge part of that. That he sat down with them and told them that the Mavericks are a family, you know? Family, as Dom would say. That means something, too, because supposedly, like, LeBron called him up. Mm Mm-hmm trying to pitch him to the Lakers. Yeah. Don't you feel like if you have LeBron pitching you and Kyrie pitching you, I don't know, maybe this sounds really dumb to say, but I feel like Kyrie at this point in his career is super genuine and like he really has found something here with Dallas that he didn't have before. And LeBron's just LeBron. He's hopped around and whatever. I know you love him. But I just feel like Kyrie's He's larger than life. He's larger than life. He's done all the things. He's just... I don't know, maybe a little bit more superficial. I feel like Kyrie's found something really special with this Mavericks team at this point in his his career, and he's having like a personal kind of epiphany here in Dallas because of the setting that he's found himself in with this team, with this coach, yeah. with this general manager, with Luca, with the fans, with not getting a whole bunch of crap from everybody, with just kind of being able to settle in, raise a family, everything that we've heard from Kyrie, I could see where that would be a really great sell from Kyrie if you're trying to sell him on something and then you have LeBron just probably giving this same old stick that he's given everybody whenever he tries to pitch anybody on the Lakers all the time. LeBron's pure mercenary. But I'll tell you this. As the season wore on, actually from the start of the season, all throughout, whenever one of the players would talk about some a game or something that was going on with the team or just had anything to say whatsoever about the state of the team, there was nobody – who made more sense than Kyrie. And there was nobody that I would rather hear talk about it in some kind of meaningful way than Kyrie. There was nobody who got to the real heart of the matter like him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was was like a revelation hearing him talk about what was going on with the team. He's the adult in the room. Yes, he is. He's a young team, but he's won a championship. He's, He's been deep into the playoffs. He's been around the block. And now that's what they get in Clay as well, you know, because it's still they looked way shocked in the finals. In addition to not being able to shoot, <laughs> which he also helps significantly, uh, they looked shell shocked. And so that's another big part of it. The downside of that is with experience comes your legs get heavy. Yeah. And who knows I've- how much he I mean, they were not closing with him at points, you know, late in the season. They were bringing him off the bench. Yeah. And then he wouldn't close because they were having to kind of hide him. This is a guy who for five years was the best on-ball defender in the world. Tear your Achilles, you tear your ACL, you turn 34. I don't know. I have concerns about that. I still, like we talked about yesterday, you you lose Derek Jones Jr., I would love to see him as their sixth man. But there is no way. He's got to play? Dude. He can't start. He's starting. It's pretty much already been said. There's no way they would have been able to sign him without promising him a starting spot. But he might not finish. He might not finish, and that'll be something they have to something they have to figure out. But I mean, he was already pissed off in Golden State. Right but, rightfully or wrongly, I mean But the whole thing too is it's cities. kind of the same thing if a free agent leaves and takes the same money to go elsewhere, but it was like a pay cut. It's the whole well, if, if he's not finishing with Golden State, he you know, he's one of the pillars of that whole thing. He built that thing. And so it's, well, you're disrespecting me here. But now he's new here. Not as if much he's baggage. he's not finishing here, he's not, he hasn't been finishing for years. He's just, he's now part of this team, and he's got to fit in the way he fits in. So it's a different thing, you know. If you are offered a big pay cut somewhere, that's you just can't take it. But you'll take the same, that exact same cut elsewhere. Because it's not, you know, you're not remembered as the guy who was making a lot, and now I'm walking through the locker room, you know, feeling a little emasculated. Yeah, I hope that's I hope that's how it works out. I he will start. I think they the, had uh, to tell him he will start, but how much he plays and the rotations are going to be really interesting because their best wing defenders are all on the bench. And I think that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, Najee is now the first Grimes, guy on the bench is Najee Marshall who can't get his own shot. Yeah, but the first guy out might be Kyrie. 
or if it's not, it's Luca. And now you still have either Kyrie and Clay or Luca and Clay out there, dude. They're gonna they'll be the number one offense in the league. I wonder if you could talk him into six man though. I think that would be perfect. I mean, you'll win an award doing that, man. I'm telling you, you're not gonna win any award. I'm telling you, he did not spurn the Lakers for less money in less years where he lives in Los Angeles unless they told him you are starting with well, Luka and Kyrie. I promise you that happened. Hmm. Now, it's real easy to do JaVale McGee where you tell him he's starting and then six games into the season he's a yeah. complete disaster. But this is different, man. It's Clay Thompson. And maybe it'll work out. He's still one of the greatest shooters of all time. He still made the fourth most threes in the NBA last year. They don't lose that series if they had Clay Thompson. Now, may not they also had Derrick Jones. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. What if they got? Wait, they don't lose the Boston series, dude. They shot like twenty eight percent from three and thirty percent on wide open threes. Yeah, but you may not get there without Derrick Jones. That's true. I so, don't think there's any way that they don't lose the Boston series. Boston was that, just that much better. They were clearly the, clearly the best team in the whole league throughout all year. the season. Yeah, all that's year. true. But it wouldn't have been a sweep. It wouldn't have been – I think they could have pushed him if they could make a shot because the Celtics were dare, daring Derrick Jones Jr. To, to shoot. But you think if they get Gentleman bounced – Gentleman sweep. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They did get the one, the blowout. Do you think they get Clay if they get beat in the first round? No, I don't. Do like, you? No, I think like – I, that's the value of these playoff wins is it makes you seem legit. Yeah, yes, I think it does. they're a real contender. Even though they were the same team, you know, a couple bounces this way and the other way, and maybe they maybe they don't make it past the second round, and then are they seen as legit by him? I think the best sell, like if Kyrie was calling him or sitting down with him, whatever they're saying, is Kyrie can say what it's like to play with Luka. Yeah. Because – no one can really answer that. And Kyrie can say, you know, hey, I've... And he can also say what it's like to go play with LeBron. <laughs> and when LeBron is pitching you to come here, you know in the back of your mind, LeBron is doing this because this is best for LeBron at this point. It isn't necessarily what's best for him. And Kyrie might be able to honestly say, dude, as far as your career, your points... You getting the looks, where do you think you want to be? Over with LeBron or here? Like, Luka is certainly, you know, takes up a lot of the ball, but it's not like Kyrie or uh, Clay is a ball handler. No. But he will open up, you know, and then Kyrie and Luka as the ball handlers, demanding all that attention. Mm -hmm. Just think of it, Clay, how I many open Clay. threes you're going to get. And besides, Luka gives it up, too. Yeah, for he sure. He takes a lot of shots, but he gives it up. No, he he wants to find you wide open, and he, he'll he keep feeding you. I wonder if Bronny had anything to do with this, too. Because doesn't it seem corny to go play with a father and son? <laughs> <laughs> Third wheel a bit. Probably <laughs> especially because of the way it is. How would you like to do a show with your dad? I wouldn't. Yeah, I <laughs> have Jake, to. Jake doesn't either. <laughs> But yeah, you're right. I mean, wow. I don't think there's ever been a player like Clay. <laughs> Whenever he's prime, when he was prime Clay, I don't think I don't think the league has ever seen anything like it. I used to have a shirt because I've always loved the guy. Maybe because I'm trying to be cool and I didn't want to be the Steph guy. But also, he plays defense and he's unintentionally hilarious. Possibly because I think he's stoned fifty percent of the time. But I used to have a shirt that was just the shot chart of the time he scored thirty-seven points in the third quarter. Yeah. That was a night where, to your point, if he doesn't have to like really handle, that was a game where he scored 60 points in three quarters on 11 dribbles. And that's what he can do here. That's a dumb Sweet. stat. So imagine. Like he'd just catch. What yeah. happened to that shirt? Uh, it might still, we're kind of in a little bit of a moving situation right now, so I'm not sure. Boy, six man would be perfect the because. The accommodation. Prob probably. <laughs> <laughs> and spiders on it. Even what he is now. <laughs> Would you trade Clay Thompson for Tim Hardaway? Yeah, obvious. Like, yeah, no, obviously I would take Clay Thompson. That's yeah. what I mean. But the problem is that's Tim, kind of what you did. We no, said, but the yeah. problem is Tim isn't starting. He was barely playing. Well, but during the season he was kind of your sixth man. And 
Oh, you're saying if Clay was your sixth man. Yes. But let's say he's starting. They got to work. They're going to have to work out the rotation. Big time. But he's. you're still going to have two of those three on the floor at all times. I would have to think so. And yeah. that's a big key. Yeah. Yes. I would have Whereas to think there was so. never a third that you would say that with, with Kyrie, Luca, and who? Who yeah. fills you full of confidence if one of Kyrie or Luca is off the floor? All right, I'll bring in Hardaway. Well, maybe that could do something. I don't know. Hardy. Once upon a time. Hardy. Yeah. We'd yeah. hope Hardy, hardy and at some point. Wouldn't you think Clay, even with his defensive shortcomings now, is probably still better than Hardaway and Jaden Hardy? Yes. But he's just going to be playing a whole lot more, and now they don't have Derrick Jones Jr. If he does start, this has changed from a defensive team to an offensive team. They may be number one offensively, but we're not going to see the defense they played last year. No. But they do have good defenders. I know, but they're all all on the bench. What if we bring Luke off the bench? It's an interesting idea. We could could consider it. But is he going to close? I don't know. Uh, Also keep in mind, I'm pretty sure Lively is going to start next year. Yeah. And while Gafford is a solid role threat and a good defender – at 20, Lively, or maybe he'll be 21 midseason, he'll be better at both. I think he's still 19. I thought he'd turn. Did he turn 20? I don't know. But oh, whatever. if uh, if you have that guy picking in the pick and roll with what he can do at the rim and you have Clay standing in the corner, that's going to be very, very hard to stop. I thought he was the, moving around it. I thought he was the third best player on the team last year. Yeah, Lively. I would agree. He was definitely the third most important. Yeah. And it's it's only going up from here. So apparently they still have like $4 million to spend. You know what I want. Dan Warder. No. <laughs> yeah, Dinwiddie's out there. <laughs> I want the return of DSJ. Why? Oh, you want on. that over Dinwiddie? DSJ can guard. I don't know if you guys think have he could kept play up defense? with him. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard, uh, I, I think McMahon, I'd seen the tweet already, but I Dinwiddie think. Dinwiddie can ball handle. That's true, but, you know. I got three. Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather have another defender. Dennis Smith? Could I Is that who you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could I interest Callback. you in? <laughs> yeah. God. Luca loves him. still in the league? <laughs> yeah. No, he had a decent year last year. Played. The Mavs 20, had him in training camp. 20 minutes ago, a game. Maybe even last year. Wait, uh, where can I he? interest you in? Brooklyn Russell? last year. Uh, Charlotte. Yeah. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. And the answer is no. He cost $4 million. No. Say it. Russell Westbrook. Oh. He Absolutely. does not cost $4 million. Yes, he does. For real? He doesn't he just, need any money. He just picked up his player option for $4 million. <laughs> And so with the Clippers, but the Clippers are trying to move him. And word is that they're trying to work something out with Denver. Want to run the chemistry of your team? <laughs> yeah, I was going to Yeah, say. send him to Denver. I'd rather get I'd rather get the Russell Westbrook lady. I we, heard someone talking about this. We played a couple. That, of that Russell Westbrook. <laughs> that's why I need her. Uh, Russell Westbrook, think of the player. He has played with all the greats. Yeah. And if he go, ends up going with Jokic, like all, he has run with just – Probably every MVP going. Outside of Giannis, but yeah. Yeah. Every other one, yeah. That's interesting. No well, deal? Uh, no, no thank you. <laughs> no, I don't okay. think so. It's interesting. The last thing I'll say about this is it's the first time I've actually heard the state income tax thing as a factor. Like Woj reported that that was a big, a big part of his situation. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know. I think it's such bullsh. You see this all the time, and you know, you'll see somebody run an analysis that says, actually, Californians pay the exact or possibly less effective tax rate as Texans because of our property and consumption taxes, which are much, much lower there. But I think when you look into it, because California's, not to get in the weeds here, but California's tax code is so progressive that the, the biggest burden for their tax rate is on super wealthy people. So if you're an average family in Texas, you in California, you probably pay about the same. But if you make $18 million a year and you live in California, it probably actually does matter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like for an average person, yeah, you might have, you know, hey, they, they you pay higher property, we pay higher personal income. 
But if you're going up to the point where it's 52%, I don't know what it is, if you make millions and millions and millions of dollars a year, that might matter. It's I don't just, know. It's turned into such a joke because we said that forever trying to get Dwight Howard or whoever. I know, but Woj said in his report, he's like, and the no income tax in Texas is a huge factor here. <laughs> that was yeah. the tweet. I voice. bet it is. Woj, I mean. Yeah, yeah right. Woj, Woj bomb. bomb. Woj yeah. bomb. That's right. I stand by it. <laughs> All right, well, it's a good time. It'll be fun if it's nothing great. else. It's a great time. I mean, they were in the finals, and then they didn't just dismantle their team. When's yeah. the last time the Mavs did that? Yeah, no, it's true. Well, and they may have gotten better. Yeah, they may have. And if nothing else, it's all about Operation Keep Luca Engaged and Happy. And he probably looks over and is like, hey, that's Clay effing Thompson. Cool. Without thinking, I don't know if he can really guard the ball anymore. Who cares? Yeah. It's Clay Thompson. He's got to be fired up. We're going to have the 26th best defense. <laughs> well, those are fun games. We're supposed to end on a positive there, Blake. <laughs> Come on. Uh, let's keep it real. Uh. Get real. I respect that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we now must move into pre-viewing our guest. We have a guest coming up. We do. He is William Pace, and we need to teach you who he is. Okay, so we did this. Uh, it was back in May, beginning of May. We uh, someone had sent to us an appearance that Dan made on the William Pay Show back in Dayton, Ohio. You want to give a year, roughly? I was thinking like ninety six. Oh, ninety eight or ninety nine. Okay, that's when I was in Dayton, and this was a guy who I saw. Like so, this was pretty. Um, Hardcore stoner days, even though I had a job on the radio in Dayton. But me, I live with my buddy, and we would uh, smoke a little every night and just be sitting around uh, like at midnight channel flipping. And we came across this cable channel that had this guy on, and he would be wearing a tuxedo. He would be singing. He would be interviewing people. Like he was the weirdest looking dude, but it was captivating. Like you couldn't turn it off. And it was like, it was midnight. So this was buried on a cable access channel. And then we just started talking about him uh, on our radio show and then ended up booking him on the radio show. And then he ended up booking me on his TV show. Yeah. So Dan made a couple of appearances there. <clears throat> These are some clips from um, the one that we ran through back in, uh, in May just to set the scene here, this is not an SNL sketch. This is the open to the William Pace Show. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Crown Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared <laughs> on the William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. The William Pace Show, asking the questions you want to ask. Getting the answers everyone wants to know, it's a new season of the William Pace Show. We're raising the bar with more commitment to educate, inform, encourage, inspire, empower, and help you have your best life. Everyone deserves to have their best life. I'm just staying the course. Here we go. Here we go indeed. So that's what we're looking at here. I don't know how long the Amazing. guy did the show. Um, his YouTube page has a bunch of interviews, mostly with the same recurring guests, and one of those was Dan. So uh, this is them coming back from break on this particular appearance. And William's a bit of a heavier guy at this time, but apparently he had, his weight had fluctuated a lot. Dan's talking about his weight. So this is cut three, and uh, you'll, you'll recognize a familiar line of McDowell humor in here. <laughs> DJ Dan. That old studio. That's me in the Dayton studio. <laughs> I, 
special guest is Dan McDowell from News Talk 1290 of the Dan McDowell Show. How are you? I am fine, William. Good, Good to job. have you here. I'm fine. Just trying to stay on my diet. It's a challenge. Oh. I'm sort of at a plateau. Bit of a left oh, turn. Is that right? And uh, you know, where you, where you go to a plateau when you, you lose so many pounds and then your body won't lose anymore and so you have to do more strenuous. I'm at a gaining plateau right now. You're at a gaining it's a matter plateau. Of yeah. Well, how many pounds have you gained? Uh, I think I've gained since at least Christmas. put on like 15 or 20. Well, not since Christmas, okay. but like in the last year. So in fact, later on in the show, I didn't want to get into it just yet, but I wanted to talk about weight loss in my new program. Okay, yeah, but, I'd uh, be interested in getting some tips and su suggestions. You know, I've sort of been, well, almost every size there is to be. You, you know, look so. great, though. You look better than you did last time. You well, lost thank a few you. pounds for thank sure. Thank you. It's, it's, it's becoming noticeable in my face, and <laughs> oh, yeah. I still have the situation with the stomach, and so I've sort of got a double-breasted... Uh, you lost a little hair, too. Maybe well, you a know, pound or two off the... Well, this hairstylist of mine, she got carried away. I, I, and I was went in there, and and she went clip 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 clip, and next thing you know, she almost I was a bald headed almost. Oh my! But I guess this is a little bit better. It's grown out some a little bit. Yeah. I'm getting used to it. Yeah. I take it that you like this is a better look for me. Uh, well, losing a few pounds never hurts anybody, you know, except for Allie McBeal. <laughs> but uh... okay. Well, I want. I so we should uh, describe because most people listen to yeah, us yeah. don't so, watch. But he is a uh, he's black. Yeah. He's very big. At this stage, he's big, but I, I gather that he's been bigger before. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But also oh, been yeah. much smaller before. Yeah, so you've... Uh, how did you describe his hair in the past? It's very weird. Uh, that's a sass, like a, isn't it? a Lego guy. It's like a... Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I've never really seen anything like it. It's kind of permish. Al kinda, Sharpton? Yeah, it's kind of got Al Sharpton here. Yeah, it's kind of like... Almost like trying to do a white guy thing with black guy hair. Yeah, that's what you said last time. Yeah. Like it's it's way floppier than you would imagine. Yeah, and he's got it. It's For teased and it's uh, possibly permed. It's, mm -hmm. Like I said, Jerry curled. It's just it's crazy. And if you watch the YouTube channel, he's experimented a lot up there. Like there's been times where he just mm -hmm. has the straight you know poodle perm. Yeah, and other times where he's got it a little more long and flowing. You, you're gonna do, you're just gonna have to Google image him because I don't think we can do this uh, properly, even if you're just an audio only person. Yeah, it's incredible. Then they used to call that kind of hair processed. Yeah, I guess that's a good word for it. Yeah, yeah it that like is it's true. Been straightened or yes. something. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So before we get to the meat of this, which is Dan's new weight loss program, here's one more bit. Um. This is cut five, where William is discussing some charity that he's going to do. And phrases you know, are very A couple of weeks ago, I got a call from Muscular Dystrophy and uh, inviting me. Are you okay? To... Oh, you don't have muscular no, dystrophy. No, okay. no, 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 no. Not me. Not All me. Right. No, no. I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. Uh, but they want me to go to jail to help raise money for muscular dystrophy. And I said, yes, if I could do a show. Uh, so we're going to tape a show there with me in jail. And so I've got right. the... <laughs> nice. at the Marriott Hotel. And I thought maybe I could call you up on the line. Uh, maybe come on. I think I'm supposed to be there at three or something like that, three to four. Sure, on the radio. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I can say help, help. I need some money. So what's the thing? They'll, they'll uh, they take you off to jail, drop. and you need to get people to call in uh, donations. I have to call people up on the phone lines and raise a certain amount of. They call it bond money or bail money or something like that to bail yeah. me out of jail. Okay. So you'd bail me out of jail. Well, we can try and get some of our li you know, As you know, I'm pretty strapped this month. <laughs> it's after <laughs> Christmas and everything. But uh, but you would give me a I'd few love dollars. To, I'd love to put dollars. the word out and have some listeners call in. and That'd be great. Help get William out of jail. What day is that going to be for the viewers? I, I believe it's... If they want okay. to maybe tune in to you my show. You got the idea on that one because we got to get to... Man, that's so total. Mr. Da Mr. Dan, it's not even funny. I know. <laughs> I know. So, uh, Dan, of course, as we try to do, when you're going to go on a show, you you need a pre-prepared bit. Even if the bit sucks, you can't just go in there straight. So Dan's bit was he brought his production guy from his radio show. And <laughs> it's obvi obviously extra funny because William is a guy who unprompted started talking about weight loss <laughs> earlier in the show. Like yeah. It's obviously something that's on his mind a lot. So in this case, uh, Dan's bit was to debut his new weight loss program with his uh, production guy, Big Jim. 
And he was probably William, what? I wanted to uh, talk a little weight yeah, loss. Uh, I, I think that's uh, yes. like undershooting it a little bit. William, I wanted that's to big gym, uh, talk a little weight loss. I mentioned that yes. in the beginning He's of the show. He's got Zubaz on. And I'd on. like to introduce, you know He's Joe is my partner probably on the air. 450 to 500. Guys, uh, so that is a man of size. Instrumental yeah. to our show off the air is Big Jim Wilson. He's our production guy. And, uh, Round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> and also, very strange, um, I was talking it's weight such loss. It's an odd get up. Um, <laughs> like a, as you can see, uh, it's January. Like a hitting coach's jersey? It's uh, post Christmas. I'm wearing my big clothes. These are my big uh, pants. This My big fat shirt. You know, it hangs over so you don't have to see the gut hanging out and everything. We have the camouflage thing. And every, every year, every January, I'm trying a different weight loss thing. I'm, I'm, now you we're know, into the bit. I'm going through eating two ounces of chicken. And uh, I'm Do trying. Do you really have to watch your weight? Oh, yeah, for sure, I mean, baby. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, like, sure, baby. Like a, a pizza and uh, I could eat a whole pie easily. Really? Yeah. Were you yeah. saying I pie mean, a lot I, back I then, too? I love eating. I I've always said thought pie. that if I ever had an eating disorder, <laughs> I could be a bulimic, but I could never be anorexic because I have to eat. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Now, so. what have you analyzed? Why not exactly you eat sensitive? So much? Right. I've analyzed why I eat so much. But really? Why, why? What's what's the driving force of you eating so much? I think because my parents were divorced <laughs> when I was uh, eight years old, and I just started eating, eating, eating ever since then. And uh, so that was a hard time for you. Yeah, I believe it was that a psychological. Was. Because I, I believe that weight loss has something to do with the psychological. Oh, for sure. You're eating oh, for, for sure. To fill yourself for other things that are not in your life. Yeah. You know? So, Back here's to the, the thing, though. <laughs> I have employed Big Jim here. He's my, uh, he's my spiritual advisor and uh, personal trainer, pretty much. Weight loss consultant. Okay. It's kind of strange. <laughs> Usually, you don't see a guy that looks like Big Jim. To uh, be a weight loss consultant. Hey, Jim, you know, like, but are you a weight loss consultant? I am, William. I've developed a two phase plan to help Dan and I believe help others. Okay. Uh, phase one of the plan, of course, is just hanging out with me. As Dan I mean, sits here now with it's me a visual, next yeah. to him, he appears thinner than he would if I weren't here. <laughs> Think about it. When you first were watching the show, you thought I was a little chunky, didn't you? you but did. now what do I look like? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got to shake it a little. So that's the first part of the plan. You must so seek and find then. someone larger than you. It's Jim, okay, so hang he out. hangs with me all the time, which okay. is a little weird during showers and when my girlfriend comes over, but it I don't mind out. it, you know? It works yeah. out. <laughs> now, the second phase of the plan, William, is Dan eats at certain times. In fact, it's for... Well, is it time to eat time now? To eat. Is it midnight? Yes. Where's okay. my... Uh, so now I Dan has a, so, a briefcase totally under his seat. <laughs> Dan, William, here's William's the totally plan. Unscripted. Here's how Dan stays thin. By standing... This, by the way, is the... Uh, this, by the way, is this briefcase uh, from Before Pulp you Fiction. open this up, now, is, is this food in here? What What is it? It, uh, it, it is Dan's regimented meals. Yeah. I, um, uh, now, I have a little something I'm... I have my lunch. I brought my lunch with me. every day. I brought a sandwich. Can you hold that for a second? <laughs> no, hand the sandwich to William. That's a turkey. Really, though, here's like the thing about my new diet. It. Does it have mustard on it? How do you like that? Thing? Why would that be important? Oh, here's more like, like for my diet. Yeah, here's the deal with my new diet, William. Um, <laughs> handing him everything. <laughs> I can eat anything. Oh, but like... I can eat... A lot of diets, you got to eat like an ounce of chicken or you got to eat this much rice. <laughs> this diet, I eat anything. Pizza, hamburgers, whatever. <laughs> And are, you gonna, are, you gonna, are you gonna pop the lid on the butt light? <laughs> See what happens is, William. Well, what's I'm the rule? Dan, what's the rule on the beer? The rule is, you start the beer. I finish the beer. Well, only light beer. Too. Only light beer. <laughs> Any food Dan wants to ingest, I have to eat most of it first, and then I give it to now, him. Now this, we have, we have, off. we have families watching the show, so I don't know if we. Oh can. no, we're not gonna drink this beer. The on the air. <laughs> right, that's just a prop. That's for you that's after the show. Just a prop. Oh, no, I don't drink any beer either. But the, yeah, so the now Dan takes the sandwich out of the wrapper. Box. I want to see the nutrition. I, oh my God. See, the, <laughs> the thing is, I can eat anything I want. What are you folks But doing? Jim hangs out with me all day, so I order a pizza, and I want to eat this pizza. Well, uh -huh. And before I can even eat two pieces, he's finished the rest of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Big I mean, Jim look, taking let me food. eat my sandwich. See, <laughs> it kind of makes me mad, well, but I'm losing weight like a maniac. I mean, every meal that I eat, he eats like three-fourths of the meal. Wait, I never can wait, get through it. Now, the calories here, what is it? Uh, Serving size. He's just container. not getting the bit yeah. at yeah. all. Now, right, I'm holding the sandwich. Yeah. Jim is just like, ripping half of it out of my hand. Yeah. Forty pretzels in that box, and, and you, you are supposed to have. I one. have thirty-four. Danny six. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
the thing is, he's <laughs> she never so orders hard. anything. That's the train problem. on the tracks. I mean, well, tell me, Jim. Let me. I go out and I order a meal. He just sits there. He doesn't order anything. Let me do some. Let me do some. 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 Uh. Uh. uh in here. Oh. Now, right. why? Why Want is me to it lay that? Down or no. 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 Right. <laughs> why is it that you? I feel you have to eat so much. Mm. <laughs> did you have? Did you have an unhappy childhood oh. life? No. No. I've analyzed it as you and Dan have, and uh, it comes right down to hunger for me. I'm just usually hungry. Hungry. <laughs> mm. No bad And do you? Do you, no. you know? Do you have any way to curb that appetite? <laughs> I just keep the thought in my mind that eventually I will get taller. <laughs> you need to find someone who's bigger than you. You need to find someone bigger than you. Are you eating out? What is it? What is it? A ham sandwich? Is that? Now, like, now we're, we're yeah, this is about... turkey, baby. This is turkey. Another baby, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> oh, this is turkey. It was the baby here. Wow. Yeah, so baby. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> That was incredible. That was just incredible. Pretty electric. So Mr. Dan, it's not even funny. And that so, was definitely the Mr. Dan we all know. And just so Ohio. Like, Big Jim just looks like Ohio to me. Uh, William Payne. Like, the whole thing just feels perfect. It feels like it all fits. It's so perfect. <laughs> well. That's so good. Yeah, so that was, what, 25 years ago? Something oh like that? Oh, my gosh. 26? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's awesome. Long time ago. And William Pace is still out there, though. Still plugging away. Still doing his thing. Doing that same kind of thing that he did there? I believe so. I don't think we have cable access anymore, but... I mean, that's pretty much where we are. We're... We're, We're the equivalent of William Pace now. We're in the same place. He's doing YouTube shows just like we are. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And uh, William Pace is going to join us. Next. T- today? How about that? All right. Well, tell me, we were almost out of time. <laughs> tell us tell, what's coming up on uh, the Dan McDowell Show. Oh, coming up on 12, the Dan McDowell Show. Don't forget to tune in February 24th. That's a Wednesday. William Pace will need your support for yeah. muscular dystrophy. Because they're going to gonna, gonna put me in jail over at the Marriott Hotel. And right. I've got to raise money. I've got to raise a lot of money for muscular dystrophy. And... Uh, uh, Dan's going to come and help bail me out. He's going to, you're going to give me what? How much money are you going to give me? Oh, my gosh. Too much to mention now, William. <laughs> That's for sure. But you are going to, and I'm going to call you on the radio. Call on the radio. So you watching out there, make sure you call into our show that day. It's uh, uh, WHIO Radio, of course. Okay. And William Pace will need your help. Okay. Well, that's it for us today. we got to go before this becomes a zoo. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. I have a little present for you. I thought it was just, uh, when I heard uh, a couple of weeks ago that I was the voice of the day, I thought that was just the cutest thing since homemade ice cream. (laughs) So I have a few uh, mystery gifts here for you. All right. And the first one is my album, my Christmas Christmas album. It's called uh, William Pace Sings Your Favorite Sacred Songs. That is great. Thank you. I call it 12 Divine Inspirational Songs Guaranteed to Lift Your Spirits. No puppet. Yeah, so that uh, little piece of audio right there coming out of the break was when William Pace joined my radio show in Dayton, Ohio in 1998. And uh, joining us now, Jake, live from Dayton, Ohio. Live to tape. We're uh, just taping this, William. It's the great William Pace. Yeah. The man himself. Good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. You bet. William Pace. It's been so long, my friend. It's great to see you. Yes, it has. It's good to see you too, Dan. Doesn't he look great? Well, thank you. Do you think I look a little thinner? Yes. <laughs> you look a little thinner. Um, I know you were always concerned about your weight uh, gain or slash weight loss. So this is my partner, Jake. Hello. He is uh, Hello, on, the, on the top nice to there. You. And um, we're here with uh, Blake as well and my, uh, my good friends, Mike and Julie. They're the uh, two on the couch. It's kind of a... Um, 
Hi, William. Nice to meet Hi, you. William. A uh, May-December romance that Mike and Julie have going. <laughs> you could but, say that. But we'll deal with that okay. uh, uh, on another time. I mean, it's an, you know, it's the way things are. Yeah. Yeah. So how's Ohio? Well, um, Ohio is Ohio. <laughs> and you know what? Ohio is Ohio. And, you know, I've learned to um, count it all as joy. And... Um, so much time has passed since we originally met. Uh, well, we won't say how many years ago it might have been, but um, I've come to see that, you know, I've grown in the show and the show is taking on a new direction. And um, from the early days, you were talking about the hairstyle. Um, I felt I had to create a look and and I definitely created a look, you know, and um, as well as the tuxedo, that was a look, you know, it, it set me apart. And uh, but we have had, you know, not big names on the show. We've had B.B. Uh, King on the show, Jimmy Walker on the show, Miss Patty Austin has been on the show. A lot of big name people. Mr. Mr. T. T. Dan McDowell. Yeah, you know. And didn't you have uh, Congressman Tony well, Hall on at one point? Congressman Tony Hall, a whole host of people have been on the show. And what people don't know, there's a story behind my show. Uh, um, in the early 90s, uh, late 80s, I was singing all across the country, singing with orchestras and concert bands and nightclubs and so forth. And, and everywhere I went, people told me I was photogenic and I ought to be on TV. And I said, well, I did major in uh, communications, mass media. You know, it was really, I double majored music, voice performance and communications, mass media. It was just by accident. But now I look back over my life, I think it wasn't an accident. I was supposed to be in broadcasting. And uh, more importantly, that I have a message for people. I didn't realize that until, you know, I just, in the early days, wanted to be on because I wanted to be a celebrity, da 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 But then there's an interesting story, I must tell you. Uh, it was in the early days when I met Dan uh, in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and um, we started doing inspirational moments on the show. Sometimes we read some uh, uh, scriptures that empowered people. And um, later, uh, several weeks later on that show, there was a lady chasing me down the aisle in oh. Cubs grocery store in uh, Trotwood, which is a suburb of, of, of where I am. And she said, I saved her life. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, one night she wanted to take herself out. She oh. was going to, she went into, she didn't have a gun. She uh, went in the kitchen thinking that she could find a, a knife or something. And uh, something told her to turn the little TV on that was on the counter. And there was William Pace. Wow. And this day, I don't know what I said. I don't know whether it was, we had started some inspirational moments on the show. Sometimes we would read some scripture. Something I said made her not take her life. It wasn't uh, then, put down the knife. It was something <laughs> yes. a little, yes. little deeper than that. put the knife that. down. She put the knife down and something, and it was in that moment that God said, no, this is not about you trying to be some celebrity. This is about you touching the lives of people. I remember and a, that really yeah, I'm sorry. I remember a show. similar story with me though. When I, when I turned you on, I was about to go to sleep, but instead I turned you on and then I stayed awake and, and watched. So it's kind of a, it's pretty much the same analogous yeah. uh, to, to that other story. You stay in the course. Yeah. You're, you're, oh, you know what you are, William. Yeah. I remember this from watching your show and watching some of the old clips um, that you sent us. It w it was a tractor beam, like I could not take my eyes off of you, and I feel very similar right now to to the way your show must be because you never know what you would be doing. You might be interviewing a, a, a big celebrity like Representative Tony, um, Congressman Tony Hall. Hall, sorry, Congressman Tony Hall. Or you might be singing some Pavarotti. Yes, you know, and when I don't sing on the show, people uh, call in and say, we didn't hear any music today. What's with that? Yeah. 
And gotta they're picking the up the knives. Got to give the people what they want. Yeah. So yeah, and we do, we do. That's that's awesome. That's and, what we're uh, trying to do here on our show. Um, maybe not specifically save people's lives, but provide a positive message. Um, inspire, but, but inspire for sure. Yeah. To stay the course. But back to creating the look. How often did you have to get something done to your hair? So you know, you're on TV. Well, you got to stay looking nice. But <laughs> as the hair being part of the look, how often did you have to do something with it? Well, you know, I said in one of my concerts one time, it isn't easy trying to be tall, dark, and handsome. It's it's a job. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> it's a job. And um, but then I said, well, folks, I have to keep trying. I can't give up. <laughs> and that got a big laugh from the audience. But yeah, it it takes. You know, it was a look. You know. Yep. Um, I have I go in between the Jerry curl and the the Wade Nouveau look and all of that and um, it's attracted a lot of attention but for the most part I'm afraid to change it because I tell you why we were doing a promotion for the show and this uh, billboard and somebody came up with the idea that they were going to put my name in fire and have that up on the billboard and I said oh no. We can't do that. My fans will think I've turned to drugs or something. Mm. <laughs> so Don't want that. We had to change that whole thing and just put nice big fonts. William Pay Show. See, I thought you were going to say uh, they would spell out William Pay Show out of like Jerry Curl hair. <laughs> you just kind of spell it well, with letters like that's better than fire. Yeah, if that would have been another look, you know. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> but what people tell me they like about the show and we receive letters all over the place and this is what has made me uh capitalize on keeping the show based in midwest but having it syndicated throughout uh because i'm afraid that i might lose what the viewers like about me they say they like the midwestern charm with a cosmopolitan flair dan mcdowell that, yeah that's what we love you know, about our friend dan too he kind of have the has those same characteristics midwest William, we loved watching the tape of when Dan went on your show. What was that? What do we say? Twenty-five years ago, whatever it was. Wasn't that a riot? I was wondering totally what you remember. Turned into a zoo. Yeah. What do you? It was. It turned into a zoo. What do you remember from your whole Dan McDowell experience back in the day? Oh, I I remember great things, and I treasure them too. Because as I said in one show, it's rare in this industry that you find one on-air personality willing to promote another on-air personality. That is a rare thing. And that he befriended me. You must know why I feel so passionate about that. Because let me tell you, you know, when I came back from singing on the road and people said I needed to be in television and da-da-da-da-da-da-da, I went to the stations and, um, they took, like the story in The Wizard of Oz, they told me, go get the Wicked Witch broomstick, come back with a list of sponsors and yada, 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 yada. And they, then they didn't do anything. So I said to them, the stations, I tell you what I'm going to do, fellas. I'm going to start my own production company. Yes. William Pace Productions. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to form William Pace Advertising. And the advertising agency will be the one that will represent the William Pay show. And we'll just pay you for your airtime. That's how I came to be. Mm -hmm. Innovator. So you don't and you don't really see own. you don't see problems, you see solutions. Yes. He stays the course. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're, that's, you're, that stay the course has been a precious mantra from God, you know. You just never know what's going to happen at any time, uh, like today, mm -hmm. and you just stay the course. Right. Is you know you're, the the now now your look is fantastic, and like Jake said, that's like that stands out. It's changed throughout the years. But let's get to know the man behind the look. Let's get to know oh, William okay, Pace okay. himself. Um, well, who William Pace? Uh, who are your uh, like growing up? Who did you? Who are your role models? Who inspired you to become? The man besides me, who has inspired you to become the man that we see before us today, William Pace? Well, as a kid, as a kid, there used to be in the early days of broadcasting, 
there used to be the 50-50 club, or what was called the Ruth Lyon Show. And she was on in Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. And people would take the bus to go to the Ruth Lyon Show, and they would have years of, of, of people on the waiting list for years to get in to the Ruth Lyon Show. And she had, it was sort of like a, a, a collective miss a mix of what my show is. She'd have people singing on the program, then she'd have celebrities on there, then there'd be local personalities, and then there would be feature stories. And um, nice piece. Some, some way that somewhere that uh, sowed a seed in me to to do that. And as a kid, you know, my parents would always tell you, "I told you to sit out, sit out, and hush up." And that was a sign there that I I would be in some form of talking in the public's eye because they they had a hard time trying to get me to hush up. Yeah. And so, but did I answer your question, Dan? Uh, well, you yeah. know, all, Ruth Lyons is is very interesting, but um, I, I do know that um, you know, uh, elsewhere in media that you used to be a big fan of uh, you used to be a big fan of Oprah at least. Perhaps you've turned on Oprah oh, over the years. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. She is, uh, has inspired many people. And I want to use my platform to uh, inspire people, to empower people, to encourage people, to help people to have their best life. In fact, I've started the WP Foundation for a Better Life. Ooh. Because sign me up. We. Better so, life? What did you say? You can give people a better life with this foundation? That's the I goal. said sign me That's up. The... Okay, okay, <laughs> I will. That's the whole idea because we want to make sure that people, if you don't have the best life, maybe yeah. you can have a better life. It's yep. so simple. You see? I love it. Yeah. You know, and that's what we do. We. You know, so uh, we are a 501c3, mm -hmm. and that's a par another part of the mission. And, you know, so much, you know, it's about the word says, if you, uh, without vision, we will perish. And I've been given a lot of vision. I, I don't know really that I've lasted 30 years on the, on, the, on the air, doing it this way, never having a television station at the helm uh, behind me, had to executive produce, produce and direct. Uh, I can tell you interesting stories all the stars that came on, it's great if you've got an ABC network or you've got a local affiliate that you know you can say, but I had to say when I was negotiating in the interview with B.B. King, with the road manager, who else do you know on the sheer strength of their name? I'm William Pace, and I have a show in Dayton, Ohio. And when B.B. King comes here, I want, would like to interview him on the show. How many people you know who knew the name William Pace, no uh, network affiliate, no local uh, affiliate, nothing. And so I didn't know that until Love that it. day, until that day mm -hmm. that, uh, of the, when he was in town at the Memorial Hall that I had landed the interview. And boy, was that, we had to scramble and all of that, get oh, camera yeah. people and all of, all of that. And we were told that we would only have five minutes oh you no hate a, a tight five they always tell you that oh it was something we i was we had to get the dressing room set up dressing room set up the lights and all of that and he walked off the stage from his first half and sat down and it, it was one of my best interviews mm, you it's killed interesting it? to know what yes it's interesting to know what you can do uh when you are down on the final moment there were no second takes Yep. And that's up on the channel too. You can watch that interview with BB King. Where where, where can people see these interviews right now? Let's promote just what you have William going on right Pace. now. Uh, just go to the channel, William Pace Show. Five words: William Pace Show YouTube. And, <laughs> Got and it. That'll, <laughs> okay. And that'll Got pull it. it all up. So now Check you're out broad the show with now you're broadcasting to the world. Well, it's you realize the world, you know, the web, I, is on the the whole world, yes. yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. wide. It's interesting that I was interviewed a, a, a 
author of the book called Child Care Before Daycare. And she's from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, someone took that show and had a big gathering and played that show in front of a lot of people. And they kept saying, William who, where is he? Uh, Midwest, you know, so you can see the, the vision that God has for me. You just have to stay the course. You can't, yes. uh, there are a lot of things to beat you down and you just have to uh, defy it. And I just yes, want to be clear you know, that Oprah, while great, never had B.B. King or Congressman Tony Hall on. And you have. So maybe you have a leg well, up on her a little bit. How about that? Well, I take that as a compliment. And yes, sir. I, I think the world, I think the world of, of Oprah, I think what she has done, uh, how she has used television to empower people, that is what I want to do. It, you know, and she gave uh, away. Had, she used to give away cars, and you gave away chocolate. Yeah, fine chocolate. <laughs> Esther Price, fine chocolate. Do you remember that? Yes, I do remember that. And did you ever see that show with Jimmy Walker? Uh, of course, you know, of course. I get, yeah, I gave him a box of Esther Price, totally unscripted, like the uh, Dan McDowell with the the diet and all of that. He took that box of candy and said, "Oh." white and black folks can have this <laughs> and it, he just made it comical and uh totally unscripted because it had dark chocolate so, and, and light chocolate right yes yeah that's the that's the that's wit the of jimmy walker yeah yeah yes and, Dan and then Dale. the interview with mr t i tell you boy i was a nervous wreck after that interview because you know the things that you thought people viewers would want to know i would ask the question he would go somewhere else with it. <laughs> and Mr. That T. Went on for the whole interview. Classic Cla T. Classic Mr. T, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and here again, what people don't know, how did William Pace get these stars to come on a local show? No network affiliate support. No local station affiliate support. It's right. kind of like and us landing William Pace without being on a network. That's right. It's huge. We are on YouTube. Well, yeah. Think, see, that's that's an entirely think, different look. I like it though. I like all your looks. Which look are you talking about? We were we were just looking at a picture of you with uh, Mr. T when you were wearing the tuxedo. With the tuxedo and the and the and the uh, ponytail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that hair is something. <laughs> your hair is well, something you know, to be envied. Nice little corsage, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, Looks the, like you're a uh, you're a man about. of size. Looks like you tower over Mr. T. I don't think Mr. T's that tall, right? Oh, really? How tall are you, William? I'm six one. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm six one. That's not too shabby. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're looking clean up there with Mr. T. Yeah. Well, I was just glad to land that interview. Anytime you can get a celebrity to come on the show, and it just gives the show more credibility, and um. And I'm in it for the long haul. So uh, I'll be doing the show uh, probably longer than Sally Jesse Raphael <laughs> all together. <laughs> and she's a what is she Random now stray. in <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you know, it's just in me. What has happened over the years, and I, when I look back at the shows, uh, when I first started, it's like, okay, I, I'm going to do this. Uh, 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 I like this. But now I have inhabited the call. I just have become a part of the plan for my life. And so it takes a little while to figure it out. There were some detours that I wished I hadn't made. Um, but, you know, then God shut down all the detours and he said, this is the call in your life and you're going to stand in it. Okay. Boom. So you have inspired us. And I want to show you how we've done, uh, how you've done so. So, can we do this video, man? Can we play the William Pace open to his show? Just so this is the will, not our open, but the William Pace open. Um, do you know what number that is? Uh, it should of, be one of your cuts. Oh, okay. So yeah. th this is your open, just for those uh, who are just tuning in, mm -hmm. which is silly. Um, yes, because I noticed that. So this is your. I the, yeah, this is the open to your show, okay? 
The William Pace Show through the years has You're been a beacon this, right? of light in the Midwest, yeah. taking you to such destinations as the Navy Look, Pier, on a boat. the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, you're in a the boat. German restaurant, Village, the German Festival, Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Crone Conservatory. You're at looking at flowers in the kitchen. Mm. <laughs> nice pastry. Some of the biggest stars, there he is. There's BB King. Like BB King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall. <laughs> Tony Hall. Show. How in now, the hell do you land Tony Hall? Ado, so, you have inspired us to uh, create a new open for our show. And our show is called The Dumb Zone. Do you have the uh, open for our show? Can we play that for William? Hold on. Let's in the DFW Metroplex, taking you to such destinations as Above Dan's Garage, the Alamo Draft House, Deuce Robinson's Family Farm, Paris, and several rich people's homes. There's always plenty of camp spins. Yeah. On the Dumb Zone podcast, some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like Drop Beth, Ted Emmerich, Haralabob Valgaris, Julie Dobbs, Sarah Heppola, Quincy Carter's voicemail, and former city council member Philip Kingston have appeared on the Dumb Dumb Zone Podcast. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the Dumb Zone Podcast, a no puppet production coming to you live via tape from the heart of DFW. What do you like that? What do you think? Oh, I love it. I love it. I loved it. So, if I have inspired you, that's a good thing. You yes. continue to expi- inspire to this very day, William Pace. And uh, well, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, and and we appreciate. Um, would you like to leave us with any kind of a song? I I know you used to sing for our radio show back in Dayton. Oh yeah, that's what yes. I was hoping. Um, yeah, you were hoping. I was hoping now? that I could hear you sing. Yeah, I've heard a lot about your singing. Boom, I was boom, hoping boom, to hear boom, something. Boom. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, how about me singing the the theme song for Dan McDowell's radio program here yes. in Dayton? What was that? You say what? Uh, go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Okay. You're making a first time call on the radio. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dan McDowell Show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was the jingle. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. And then, then he made that the jingle on his radio show. That's right. What Remember honor. that, Dan? Yeah. Hey, would you do this for us? Because I know you know this song very well. Um, so we're called the Dumb Zone. I'm sorry Kinda that funny, we're called right? that. It's not not a great name. They're not really dumb though. We got sued and stuff. That's it's a long a story, William. Yeah, but and we're okay. about <laughs> we're about to have our one year anniversary, or I guess you would call it a birthday. Would okay. you sing Happy Birthday to the Dumb Zone, and then we can play you it on? Got the- it. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the Dom Zone. Happy birthday to you. Fantastic. Oh, thank William, thanks for joining us. We'll do this again uh, sometime, I promise. Thank You're you a sweet, so sweet much. man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Great to meet you. Okay, take care. Good to talk to you all. <laughs> all right. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye, William. <laughs> the great, the great. Bye. I love you. William Pace. <laughs> Who you voting for? <laughs> Did you get the vax? <laughs> wow. I'm a little starstruck. <laughs> Oh yeah, wait a minute, Uncle Hotmail. Hey, 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 Uncle Hotmail. Are we unhooked? He's, He's gone, right? Is there any you sure we're unhooked? Wow. I need a cigarette. How do you feel? <laughs> Are we pleased? Yeah, that was awesome. He's a sweet guy. Very sweet. She brought it. We're very pleased. 
multiple times where Blake and I just got a met eyes. Like, great dude. <laughs> he could talk forever. Yeah, yeah. No, we talked about. There's people like that, you know. You just gotta hop in there and kind of mm-hmm. segment the conversation for him a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that's what he does. Yeah. Yeah. He's a professional. It's what he does. <laughs> gotta let him be him. <laughs> I felt bad how, like, right out of the gates, he was defending his hair and his tux. What did yeah. he hear us saying? Yeah. yeah. Which, no, we were just describing. He's got a great look. Did, yeah. Were you listening to all that? Like, look at Possibly. me. You're not going to remember me. Possibly most of it was like, oh, is it a Jerry? And then uh, I'm like, hey, it looks like a black guy trying to have a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, yeah. That's yeah. what you said last yeah. time. That's it. You nailed it. Uh, that's, I didn't uh, know you heard, heard all that. How did he hear all that? It's okay. It doesn't matter. You know what we're going to do? I'm sorry. Just stay the course. Stay, stay the, the course. course. <laughs> That's all you can do. Mm-hmm. If we've learned one thing. That and uh, don't let a dog in a hospital where heart transplants <laughs> yeah. take place. And if that lady... I'm the zoo. <laughs> if that lady had <laughs> tuned into us, she probably would offed herself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For Aww. sure. We, <laughs> she, she would be dead. It'd be the opposite effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be just the like she was actually feeling great, and then she us, and, and then she's decided, like, "Where is there's it? no point." Aww. Um, I don't think that's true. Anyway, I got a couple of pieces of uh, mail mail to my actual home. Um, one was the T-shirts that. Yeah. Uh, eh, we, okay. I don't think we have to yeah, show yeah. him. Okay. He said he doesn't know if he has the license to make those. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> but uh, thanks to uh, Casey's <laughs> dad, Jason, who's not only makes us some uh, graphics for the show. But he's uh, made us some T-shirts. This came as well, and I think I know what it is because I got an email. All right, can we pop it off? Yeah. yeah, I'll look at the email, which just says, "I knew I had to get you this gift." Now, what is it? What was it? A new blanket? It's a big blanket. The John Wayne. John Wayne. Yeah. John Wayne Chisholm. Yeah. Oh. John Wayne movie Chisholm. So he says, "I'm sending you this gift." I found it and immediately knew it had it had to be done. You're fascinated with your fascination with the Chisholm Trail and how it strings across the midsection of the country is legend. I found something that you can use to share this experience with others. Now you can cover yourself and or another consenting adult in thick warm Chisholm anytime oh. you wish. Wow. <laughs> and uh yeah. That is a busy blanket. Yeah, that's a big it's a great movie. We could put that right next to uh, the Sinbad blanket. Sure. You could cover Mike Reiner with your thick, warm chism. <laughs> if you would like. That does look I would invite me. same. Yeah. <laughs> so those are a couple things that were actually mailed to my house. He didn't even acknowledge that uh, it checks the John Wayne box for me. No. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's a good man right there Teeth on, on screen. Teeth on a blanket is weirding me out, though. Isn't that weird to have teeth on a blanket? Like, if, yeah. you, if it's on your lap and you look down and there's just a, a smile staring Better than Chisholm. <laughs> That's true. You get That's too much true. teeth, you don't... All right. You can't get the <laughs> Don't want to be toothy. So I had... Um, that was delivered to my house, but these the wild have been one, delivered fellas. to my electronic mailbox. Dear Uncle Hotmail... Hope this inferior iCloud account gets to you. My good buddy, um, Alex's 30th birthday. Out of respect for Jake, I have refrained from sending any money for this shout-out request. That's from Kyle White. Okay. Tio Muy Caliente, it is my Charlie Huff birthday. What number was Charlie Huff? 49. Like all knuckleballers. We got an expert in here now. Mm Mm-hmm. The highlight of my year was seeing the Dumb Zone live in Tyler. Um, let's see. He left a bunch of Ranger giveaways for us. He gave you, he said, some Ranger steroid nesting dolls. I would also like Jake to know that every year on my birthday, I start watching Frasier and plow through the whole <laughs> series over the course of July. I know how much he loves the show, so please let him know he's welcome to watch it with me at any time. Season five. Season five, widely acknowledged as the best season. <laughs> uh, he says, no puppet, you're the puppet. Josh. Never seen one episode. No, I haven't either. It's a silly okay. thing to explain, but for some reason, Dan, so has modest. Gone, Dan has gone years thinking I was a huge fan of Frasier. Despite the <laughs> fact Did he really think that, or is this something no, he, he just assigned to you? He thought that. 
Yeah. I have no idea why. The few times I've seen the show, the I show hate it. about radio. Yeah, I did. I hated it. And so now people are buying me Frasier stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you made it. Yeah. Feels good. Day two DF here, number 852. I let letting you know it's my brother Matt Murphy's birthday. He's only a day five, which is fine, I guess. It is his Clayton Holmes birthday. I don't even know who that is. Uh-oh. That's a former cowboy great, isn't it? He says, no math, just an obscure 90s cowboy with two rings and a few suspensions. Okay. If Jake doesn't know this one, he's a poser. Yep, oh, that's me. A poser. Oh, he wasn't there after 95, 92 to 95? Okay. I don't remember this. Did he play much, Mike? Some. Not well, but some. They had to put somebody out there. Those were rather lean years. Oh, okay. He was Kevin Smith's backup. Hmm. He Was he the shark? Then no. That was Kenny Gant. Yeah, I know. I'm saying that's that's the only one I care about. Shauna writes, hey, McDowell, I have a microwave. Let's blow some shit up. I have an extra. I would like to donate it to the cause. Could I watch this exhibition of man-made electrical fire? Oh, and today is my Daryl Johnston birthday. Okay. I'm such an old now. 48's not old. You're shade out of your teens. More dingu, more chappy. The same amount of Sarah Heppola, definitely not more, from Shauna, day Can seven. I tell you I was on top? Whoa. Sarah. She's day seven. Sarah. And she has a microwave. I've said I wanted somebody to give us a microwave so we can do stuff with it, like... You wanted to microwave a CD. Yeah, I want yeah. to put metal in there and see what happens. It's we can put, scary. We can put Frasier in there. You wouldn't dare. Can we do it here in the studio? I would advise against that. <laughs> Why? Would it catch on fire? It's going to catch yeah. on fire. Yeah, I told you by the time I microwaved my brother's hands It's going to catch on fire. What What happened to Ballsy Jake that I used to know? <laughs> got a good thing going like, here. Hell yeah, we... man. Don't burn down your studio. Effing light a fire in here, bruv. Remember uh, Jackass Jake? Now it's like, uh, is that up to code? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So what if we have one of the big, long, like, orange extension cords? Run it outside. Run it outside. It's sitting on cement. We got the Frasier DVD. Why don't mm-hmm. we just do it at your house? In the house? No, do it outside at the house. Yeah, tough guy. Yeah, Let's video. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you do it in your bedroom? In this is badass. You don't have to do it live. I think we should plug it into the RV. Ooh, yeah. Do it on the road. Blow some stuff up in the Out RV. In the parking lot. You're going to blow yourselves up on the way there. Don't do that. All right, Shauna, you I want You guys want to do some I You guys want to do some cheese in on the way there? My old tradition. Throwing Oh, yeah. I- explain what cheese in is. So, uh most of my vandalism was pretty harmless, but one thing we would do is when it's hot like it is today, pretty much the entire summer, you would, uh, typically someone in the back driver's seat, you would go and get a bunch of packs of sliced Velveeta, your craft singles, uh, and you would just lob them into the other lane, like the oncoming traffic. And if you could land it on the windshield, they, you know, it's a little dangerous, but it, it's a small square of cheese, but they're like, what the... And then they hit their windshield wipers, and now there's just <laughs> cheese <laughs> melting and being spread all over their windshield. And it was really easy. You didn't even, because you, you didn't have to throw it. You just kind of had to soft toss it over there and time it right. And they would just drive right into the cheese. And now they could still see, but it's a real pain in the ass. Your, your wiper fluid can't really get it. I like that. Yeah, it was fun. We should do that on the way. <laughs> I'd just find some chips when I go to town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, by the right. way, I didn't tell you this, but that party I was Base. at the other day where everybody was talking baseball, youth baseball, mm-hmm. they have a like nacho cheese machine. Gross. What's that mean? At their house? Yeah. I, wow. They have baseball kids over there all the time, and the kids love it. Like They play over there, and they're used to getting ballpark nachos. So they just have like a, That's awesome. a cheese dispenser like you have at the ballpark. Pretty sweet, actually. I had some nachos. Dear Dan and Jake, this is from Austin Guttery. Great dude. He invented the hang zone. Uh, The actual hang zone that was in the mall. Yeah. Do you know this story of Austin? 
Well, I know the story of the hang zone that was in the mall. Like they were closing down Valley View Mall years ago. Oh, I miss it. They were, it was halfway demolished, I think. Oh, yeah. But they still had some stores open in there. Like one out of every 10 storefronts, there'd be something in there. So it was really weird. Good swords. But they were, so they were renting out for like 200 bucks a month if you wanted to rent one of those. So Austin did, and he called his place the Hang Zone, and he put a couch in there, and he put a Nintendo in there, and uh, like a couple of posters. <laughs> and it was a place where you could just go and hang. That did was he the- charge people to hang? No. Just go. Just yeah. go hang. It's pretty brilliant. And his and friends we, would we, just hang out there. We did a remote there. Because it was called the hang, and then we ended up stealing the name, the Hang Zone. Do you remember who we had on that day? No, Bill Fackerback. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Went to SMU. Was in coach. SpongeBob. Patrick. Patrick from SpongeBob. Anyway, he yep. emails us, Austin. I have finagled my way into throwing the first pitch at the Rangers game Sunday, July seventh, in a giant Slurpee costume. Wow. Do you comedic geniuses have any bits you want me to do when I'm out on that hallowed mound? Nothing is off limit, uh, off limits, all caps, nothing. A few people say that and mean it, and I believe them, and he's one of them. That guy is a bit. Might need a little time to think about it. We have a few days. Yeah, it's it's not enough of a bit that he's, that he's dressed as a Slurpee. <laughs> right, like what do you do with someone in a Slurpee costume? Throwing out a first pitch. How do we make this weirder? Could he drop a human heart and a dog? <laughs> that would be great. Like instead of a, a baseball, it's a human heart. Yeah. I don't know what, how much access he has to what's inside the costume, you know, so prop wise. I mean, could he do like a free free Palestine thing like out on the mound? <laughs> Dressed as a Slurpee? <laughs> uh, what do they call it? Self-immolation. Self-immolation, yeah. Just a Slurpee on fire yeah. out there. Like. <laughs> just light yourself on fire. But it's not to protest. Jonah Heim's got an extinguisher. He's, he's not to... protesting Gaza. He's protesting, like, something with us. Yeah. Uh, YouTube not, uh, whatever. They, they wouldn't uh, pay us because Jake said a bad word or something. So I read about that this morning. I was told that it's only in the seven, first seven minutes. By the way, were none of you going to tell me about this? Tell you what? That cursing demonetizes Internal us? Internal strife. I was just kind of here, joking Mike. there. I was. Oh, no, it's a real thing. It. I really? saw people complaining about it this morning. You can curse, and it's so funny to read because it lists every curse word that you can say, and then on the F word, it does the F asterisk CK. Fuck it's it. like, dude, we're adults here. I know what word you're talking Fuck about. You, you just mm -hmm. spelt out all the other Fuck ones. It. But apparently, <laughs> Fuck you, it. You, can't say it in the first, you can't say it in the first seven minutes. And you can't um, put it in the title. <laughs> huh. That's it? Yeah. And you can't so do it's... what Rob just did and like rapid fire it throughout. <laughs> so we just lost money on this Fuck one? it. <laughs> so are you guys going to need an alarm? Scaring. A seven minute alarm. Yeah, it's that, that, after okay. seven minutes? Definitely. Okay. 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 This okay. email is following like up on the Hooters okay. to go. Yeah. Fun. Which was awesome, by the way. We yeah, had, it, was, it was quite tasty. We had Hooters to go the other day. Uncle Hotmail, a uh, quick observation I feel you don't get credit for, so I'm going to read it. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a part-time DoorDash driver, anyone that sends me to Hooters to pick up a delivery is a hero in my book. You're basically sending a guy to go get your order. You're paying him to look at hot women and not feel creepy about it. That being under the veil of, hey, I'm just a delivery guy trying to pick up an order. I'm not here to check out the women half my age. So you're welcome, so you're a hero. Creepy old man. Yeah. Uh, T.O. Yeah. Gash, did Jake ever... <laughs> That's not an official nickname. T.O. Is... Gash. Uh-oh. Is Gash on the list that you're allowed, not allowed? You can say Gash, right? I don't think they even thought about having to cover that one. To be honest, they with haven't you. seen. They didn't see me coming. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's probably what Uncle it was. Gash. <laughs> Did Jake ever sell his Luca NFT before they became worthless? Just a follow-up thought I had because I saw someone crying about losing their retirement when the NFT market vanished. I made Jake. two thousand dollars. All right. Yep. Bought low, sold high. That's a small business owner that I want on my side. Yeah. 
I bought it for probably, I can't remember, it was like 1500 and sold it for, I think, 3300 So pretty close. All right. Yeah. And then I got out the game. Remember? I think I might still have like a Miles Plumley, but I haven't logged in in a year and a half. And finally, I have one from Jeremy who says, No purpose to this Jeremy. email other than to tell you about an experience I had I couldn't share with anyone else. I was hoping you were going to do this one because I had it. Oh, you want it? Well, no. Go for it. We need to talk about this. This is in the same vein of 9-11 memorials in Mex Mexican restaurant parking lots. Last weekend, I went with the family and a few others to Splashway Water Park in Sheridan, Texas. Great place and fun time. Hmm. Sounds suspicious. Where is Sheridan, Texas? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to look because this, this place does actually look awesome. So I, I'm just guessing a uh, Hawaiian Falls, Wet n Wild, some kind of scene, right? Like that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. East Water slides, Antonio. whatever. Yeah. However, on Saturday, as we are taking a break, eating lunch under some shade, I hear on the loudspeaker across the entire water park to stand and gentlemen please remove your hat because the national anthem was about to be played hmm. as you can imagine being a dumb f i reacted in surprise and shock my wife did not reciprocate my questioning and my other friends promptly rose and removed their hats and stood at attention people standing in line for water slides food in restrooms etc while the anthem played immediately following the anthem none other than lee greenwood plays across the park <laughs> no puppet from jeremy okay now let me ask you something first of all that's crazy and i want to talk about it second did you have the same experience i had where this was in your viewer mail viewer mail stack yesterday and you were like not today yeah, <laughs> we were at the v we were at the VFW yeah. yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> and I had I this email this ready. Yesterday morning. Yeah, I had a copy to, to my run sheet. That might like, not be the day. Ah, maybe not today. <laughs> maybe not. Not going to highlight our 9/11 memorial tour. But that is that is batshit crazy. Did I mess something up? Oh, and I think uh, I think I told you guys about it one time. I saw I saw it done at a restaurant. In Grapevine. It was National like National Anthem. It was an Italian restaurant, and they had a band playing, and they were doing, you know, the Eagles and the classic rock acoustic bit, and then they got to the National Anthem, and they're like, hey, if everybody could stand up, and I'm like, what? Stand up? Like, I'm eating my rigatoni, and I wasn't going to do it, but it's not that big of a restaurant, so I would have been the only person in there not doing it. Yeah, what's the... Oh, you know what? In fact, I remember I, another I... detail. We were sitting outside. There's a, you know, on Grapevine, Maine, there's like a couple tables in front of each restaurant. Yeah. But we were sitting outside where the window was. <laughs> so I don't think I did stand up, but everyone outside could see that I wasn't. <laughs> Very curb moment. All right, what do we have, Rob? <laughs> I've been cheesing a news so I didn't come up with this. This is something else other people have done. Okay, let's watch this news report. Well, we talked about Tide Pods. Well, some people in Temple are not letting a viral TikTok challenge die. It's called cheesing or the cheese touch, <laughs> oh, where so-called pranksters throw cheese at cars. Yeah, but those doing it probably don't realize the damage they are doing no, and I realize the it. trouble they could face with the law. Six News reporter Bailey Bates joins us live to explain. Bailey? Hey, Leslie and Chris, the people this has happened to around Temple didn't want to talk on Slow camera voice. today, but some of them tell me they were mad and some just laughed it off. Here's why. It's called the cheese challenge. People are flinging single slices of cheese on just about everything, hoping that it sticks. Babies, it does. motorcyclists, and even moving cars. Just like this. <laughs> Yeah, that's my move. That's, the these are my people right here. For an just throwing cheese driver, at it. See, you just whip it like a frisbee a if you're doing it like that. A yeah. Oh, oh, that guy took one to the dome. Tactic. Get his helmet. Get his helmet. Oh, yeah. it's stuck yeah. on your motorcycle yeah. helmet. He's like, what the hell? Had cheese left for them. <laughs> Believe it's just kids pulling pranks and drying out the trend. Most cars cheesed have been parked on the streets, <laughs> not being driven around town. But those who have been cheese do add that it's very annoying. The yeah. cheese on cars can cause a major problem to paint jobs and glass, uh, especially oh when yeah. it's hot. Yeah, they that's cheese. why you do it when it's hot. <laughs> Quite the mess. <laughs> Most commonly thrown, processed <laughs> cheese singles that mostly look like American or cheddar cheese. Why is that an important but detail? But a variety of cheeses are used in the prank. You Six can't use Swiss. Told, the more the acid in a cheese, the more damage it could <laughs> cause to a vehicle. Uh. A temple woman whose car was cheese says, thankfully, all that was left was a greasy spot. 
spot. That was until her car Thanks. went through the wash. What else would it leave? Now, although there have been many... All right, yeah. <laughs> These are my descendants. That was a fairly recent report. I was in this game 22 years ago, so okay. I'm proud of myself. So, Jake, you're telling me at this stage of your life, if you were driving down the street, say, like, rushing to go pick Nora up from somewhere, and you got cheesed by some punk, you would handle that well? Well, here's the thing. I would obviously, in the moment, be like, oh, this... I'm going to chase this guy down. But every single time something like that happens to me now, I have to think I earned this. Yeah. I just did. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff we were I'd doing so to people. I'd be so pissed if I got cheesed right now. You have the right to be. You're righteous. You, you, did, you were never doing this to I people. I didn't cheese anybody in my life. So for me, I kind of have to just say, charge it to the game. Yeah. Also, though, you know, how often kids- does this happen to you? Um, You know, it'll be something like... um. Like if you go to those festivals down in 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 downtown Grapevine, there's always kids doing kind of like wiggly. really dumb stuff, and they're cutting in front of you, or they're kind of like bumping up to you, or I don't know. I feel like uh, I'm trying to think of the last time something like this happened to me, but where you had to charge it to the game? Yeah. What I was thinking is the kids these days. I got cut off by a kid back in our neighborhood on one of those dumb little e-bikes the other day. Mm-hmm. What's with those? Those kids are yeah. going like 35 miles an hour, and he just swerved around me and like buzzed me. Is that the new moped? I guess, yeah. No helmet. Well, and I think kids are trying to bypass learning <laughs> to ride bikes. No helmet. <laughs> because of the e-bikes. Okay. Or the e-scooters. Detour. Or whatever. I understand if you don't want to ride a, uh, wear a helmet riding a bike, but these things are going like road speed. I know, but you're you're calling out someone for not wearing a helmet and it just makes you sound like an old man. It looks super dangerous to me to have a 13-year-old. Even you say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, He's you know what? Trying to be cool. We'll bring back yeah, old, old me. Next time I'm going to run him into a ditch. <laughs> and film it. Yeah. But I, I my <laughs> point was the him. kids these Daughters, days think haters. that they're coming up with this cool TikTok chant like you were doing this before. Yeah. You weren't Didn't doing need it a for video. TikTok. You were doing it for the love. Yeah. The love of cheesing. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Can mopeds right. do 35? I don't know what these things are. Blake, do you have any insight on this? I don't I don't think I know what you're talking about. <sighs> it's like a bicycle that you don't have to pedal. Oh, it's, e-bike. it's an e-bike, but it does have pedals. You know, I was, I was hoping that the segue was going to become a thing. Boy, I know you were. When Job had one. I know you were. The rest of development. I looked into buying a Segway. <laughs> You'd be so awkward <laughs> cruising around on a Segway. Yeah, so these are called There's e-bike like 3, motorcycles. like 3000 bucks for a used one. I'm like, eh. Yeah. My like, son yeah, like that. That's scooter. what I see in our neighborhood. Yeah, I've seen it. You don't need okay. a helmet for that? Oh, yeah. There's some of those cruising around our neighborhood, too. You know. probably should, but scary. whatever. If they die, they die. You know? Yeah, whatever, man. Yeah. Here's <laughs> are we ready for this? Absolutely. Duh. Well, we do uh, start the news with some good news here. Is DPD has discontinued a silver alert for a missing woman after she was located safely. She's 68 years old. She was uh, the silver alert was issued Saturday. They found her uh, yesterday. So my 68. Th- the reason I'm doing this report. Yeah, 68 seems young for a silver does. alert. Typically, not the type. It says she has a cognitive impairment. No offense, Mike, but it might just be that she's 68. I don't know. Um, Thank you. But uh, <laughs> I was wondering if, as a bit, you would go missing for a couple days and let us break, like, let us, there's a silver report, and then we find you. <laughs> and we we, re- we report you, and it gets us pub yeah. because we're like, we just, you know, we checked everywhere we thought he might be in places he loved, and then we're on the news with Mike, and we're like, we found him. That's great PR. What I'm talking about is a fake silver alert. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. You can't do it yet. Yeah, let's do it. Wait, so you want who do you want to go missing? Mike? Yeah. Okay. Mike has to go. No. Because they would look at Rob and be like, this guy's too put together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you let them do that, Mike? Would you fake your Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Like we put him up somewhere nice. Uh-huh. Now didn't you once under a pseudonym? Didn't you once allow yourself to be pushed onto an airplane in a wheelchair? <laughs> what? I did. For a bit. I did. <laughs> Just to, <laughs> so we could get like you I did. a disability. I've done this for a before. Bit. Like better access. <clears throat> yes. Get I, on the plane I, first. I've done this before. Was it Southwest? <laughs> like, hey, I need to get right on. 
I'm pushing my father. <laughs> oh, gosh. So you have to stand by that bit. about that. Like, yeah. the whole time you're at the airport, you can't just all of a sudden get off the plane no, and start no, walking. No. <laughs> right. You, you, you got to commit, commit to the bit. You got to yeah. ride that out. But it gets you past security, gets you through everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not going to, like, check your legs. Or... Speaking yeah. of old bit. Um, That's brilliant. Do you think one day we could go do a tandem trailer review man <laughs> at a movie theater? What trailer that evaluating man? Trailer evaluating man. <laughs> I think about that almost every day. So you just review a movie based on the trailer? No, no. No, no you no. review the trailers. In the theater. In the theater. So when you're sitting there and they start running <laughs> the trailers. That's what I say. You review a movie based on oh, the trailer. Yeah, okay. That's I all you, you watch. Meant... You never watch the movie. Yeah. You just watch the trailer. Yeah, you just but watch you, the trailer. But it's in it's IRL, so it's just they run something and it's just this will fail. Okay. And you say it out loud? In yeah. The yeah, the, yeah. In the silence between oh. this trailer and that trailer, you just yell, okay. this will fail. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. You used to do that? Yeah, I did. I bet the Alamo, well, once they get their act, their stuff back together, I'll bet they'll let us do it. Well, see, that's the thing. We could live stream from right in there. That's the thing. I thought about doing it a couple times and we had movies there, but I didn't want to just crap all over movies they're going to show. And also, I don't want to do it if it's permitted. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like not a prearranged bit. Yeah. yeah. That's a connection. Yeah, it works there. best when it's spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he's in yes phase of life. I bet you he'd do it. Yeah. I'll You're in the it. yes phase of life? Yeah. yeah I'll what do does anything. that mean? I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what it means, just like it sounds. Well, at least in Plano, one of those options have been taken off the table for you as more charges have been filed against a former employee at a Plano massage parlor. It was under investigation for alleged sex crimes. Uh oh. Who's who's charging him? Not one of the like who's the victim? Um Sounds like I I want to be the victim. Yeah. Well, no, that's the police. Okay. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Okay, so wait, like what? That, so if, the, if they gave someone a, crime, a sexual a favor that didn't want it? So here's the thing. They were under investigation. Uh, had a pending case for prostitution, and they got him on. You don't have a license. This was Golden okay. Feet Spa, little part of a uh, citywide sitch. Not foot, spa. A foot fetish place. Nah, but Julie knows. So they have. There's. You can go get a real massage at a established establishment. Yeah, and pay like two hundred and fifty bucks. No, I mean, I don't know where you're going. But well, like, like at a at a hotel or something. Okay, but the place I go is it's fifty. The place where Dan met Gary. Ah, uh, Gary. 50 uh, or 55. Gary, strong hands of Gary. But you can also go to, for example, Dan, there's one of these places in the parking lot of the Tom Thumb uh, in Wise Guys. It just says foot spa. Oh, really? You can get a massage there. Oh, yeah. And you I can also just get your feet well. rubbed, and that's going to be like 25 bucks. Yeah. Huh. 30 bucks. You can get 60 minutes for 35 bucks. But it's also a very different experience. There's no soothing music. Obviously, there's no talking. <laughs> I think that probably went without saying. There's a significant language barrier. Uh -huh. And they definitely That's want you to be fully nude. Oh, really? Yeah, and they get way closer to your junk than the people at the established places ever would. Some you know from experience? <laughs> yes. Oh. They keep huh. it... They, they would, you're nude, but they have like a towel over it. Okay. Not that big of a towel either. And they make their way on up there, huh? Yeah, uncomfortably so. Or comfortably, depends on how you look at it, I suppose. <laughs> well, don't don't you feel like sometimes that part of you needs a little? <laughs> what part? Not the actual what part? part. Your groin. <laughs> yes, your groin. Like yeah, from I get whatever. You're saying the close part. Yes, like it needs actually it. needs a massage sometimes. Here's the problem. So Julie, they're on to something. There's that a, if you're really the dirty. one that shouldn't be weirded out by it. They there's know a, what they're doing. A physical reaction. I don't have that to problem. To the groin being massaged. I don't have that problem. <laughs> that. Well, we do. <laughs> yeah. Now, to be that fair. sounds uncomfortable. They're not worried about it. Yeah. But in any case, that's the type of place that this was. Uh, they busted a couple different places in Plano that were operating without a license. And they arrested those people for prostitution. I'm sad. Because I think there's a lot of foot care places that. Don't do that, and I don't want them all to get a bad rap. Yeah, and I think there's also probably a decent amount of human trafficking involved here. Mm. You guys should go bail them out. 
like Randy Galloway and Quincy Carter. <laughs> See that human trafficking. <laughs> Remember that podcast we listened to about the back page? Yeah. I got to finish it, but I got four in. Yeah, but I wonder if, like, are you just being swayed by the national media who has not really looked into it? They just hear the word human trafficking and then just assume, yes. It, like, are you sure there's human trafficking at that place? Um, well, I'm just thinking about, if you remember a few years ago, over kind of by where we would practice for ticket stock in the later days. So it's kind of by the design district, but it's back there in that yeah. industrial area. There was a place back there that got raided, and they arrested. You know why I remember this? Because it had some connection to one of our uh, Chinese restaurants there in South Lake that rebranded. Oh yeah, um, they were like. I can't to, remember. It's called Dragon House. Oh okay, yeah. But it used to be called something else. Yeah, it's across from uh, Duff's, right? And it's fantastic. Yeah. But they were wrapped up in it because they were part of like the laundering scheme for the yeah. massage parlor. And when they arrested the people at the massage parlor, they found that. Like, over half of the women had been forced to be there through trafficking. But. He's going to hold out this, la this die on this hill that human trafficking is not that big of a deal. It is. Were they in a better spot than they were? Right okay, they that's what more logical. It might still be better than the mud hut they came from. Or oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just hey, he's not wrong. Spitballing here. Okay, I support you, you wanna, Mr. Dan. You want to get I mad at me so. for animals in captivity better. in the zoo? And you want to encourage them, given HJs every day. <laughs> it's an honest living. It's the world's oldest profession, Blake. They call those hanges. Yeah. Sorry. What do you guys know about swatting? Nothing. Blake does. Is it like cheesing? No. <laughs> Not oh. flies. What do we got? It's like hanging? So swatting is a, uh, it's like an online gaming or streamer thing. And usually it's like there's a little beef or somebody just wants to be a little D. It's when you falsely call in a report at someone else's house so serious that the SWAT team shows up at their house. Oh, okay, yeah. And people have died over this. Like there have been people who walked out with their hands up, but they thought they had a gun and they just gassed the guy. So there's a kid in Collin County who is about to face serious, serious time over this. Uh, I don't know if the the it says juvenile, so that's why they didn't put the name or the the age. Why are you nodding, Blake? As if you know. Uh, because I had heard that like a whole bunch of Brookshires had been called for bomb threats. Yes, and, and so, Tyler, and it yeah. was all him. And uh, he was calling bomb threats in Tarrant County people. too. Yeah, it was just this one kid. Yeah, ten he states. Had, he had himself a VPN. You don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just using Star sixty nine. What does it mean? A VPN is some kind of a fake. Uh, it's how you can address. mask your IP address. Yeah, it'll make you look like online. you're doing something from France, right? So let's say that hypothetically, um, you didn't want to wait on the Texas Senate, or I don't know where this is right now, to repeal Governor Abbott's ruling on age verification regarding Pornhub. You would get a VPN. Or yeah. If you want to watch the Rangers on MLB TV and it's if you want to get to the out, dark web, but you're in, yeah, that's how you get to the dark web, Mike. You love the dark web. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever been on the dark web. No, but we were Me big neither. Dread Pirate Roberts fans. Yeah, we were. So, yeah, the Texas Supreme Court today, Dan, actually said they will consider a challenge to the law. So the hub might be back sooner before later. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. Yeah, I'm, so I'm happy tired of these other these other sites. Make me feel they're you're happy for us. Yeah, it's the same videos, but they're it's just seedy. The setup looks real Geo Cities ish. Bingo. You think for your Jake. your <laughs> husband watches porn? Don't don't answer that. Why are you aiming your target at I'm me? Just He's over here admitting you, to being very distraught about don't porn. Do it. Oh, both, don't do it. Both of us are. <laughs> we know we're dirtbags. Pornhub is a clean... I just like, think most first wives of all, there's not think a clean they run an above-board operation. They don't allow revenge stuff. They, right. moder they moderate it very well. They're the Joe and Troy of porn. They, <laughs> they are America's porn side of the week. <laughs> That's exactly what they are. Best producers... The eighteen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard it all, but that might be the funniest thing I've ever heard you yeah. say. It's exactly Joe what it is. Troy. And then our final, our final story, uh, there was a woman at a taqueria 
in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. She goes into the store, and I don't know what the situation is here. Maybe she had eaten there earlier, and she's claiming that the uh, employees <laughs> stole from her. She wants some money back. Yeah, that one's going to linger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so once uh, some employee calls the restaurant, it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and they show up, and she is um, sitting at a table with a gun underneath it, pointing it at an employee. Oh. So she kind of thinks she's slick here. 70-year-old mm -hmm. woman. Um, and she goes in and accuses the staff of taking her money. I don't know if you would be able to find this video, man, but uh, if you Google uh, Fort Worth restaurant gunpoint, I kind of want these guys to see her, but it's not that big of a deal. Is she hot? Um, well, we'll wait and see if we can find it, and if not, I'll tell you. She said she's 70. They got 70-year-old hots. Yeah, they're 70-year-old hots. Hell Come yeah. On, How old's Helen Mirren? Okay, it's probably not Helen Mirren in Fort Worth. <laughs> yeah, holding a gun. 78. At a it's very unlikely. He's right. Uh, they do have okay. hot 70 year olds. You guys, right. Okay, you guys be the judge. You're right. She is hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not that one, though. They so, may have them, but that is not one of them. So she, she does look like somebody who might have pulled a gun at a taqueria. At 1 p.m. <laughs> in Fort Worth. I'm not saying anything. Come on, say it. So, uh, like I said, she demands a refund. She pulls out the small back, uh, black pistol. She's pointing it at an employee under the table. Um, they showed up, the cops, and she tells the cops as a part of the investigation that the staff took her money and denied having a gun. I mean, there's lying to the cops, and then there's, uh, I don't have a gun, and there's a bag next to you with a gun in it. Yeah. They're well, probably going to search it. In which case, got to give did. it a try. Yeah, got to take a true. shot. They uh, they search the bag. They discover a firearm, and they match the description provided by the victim. And it says here the description was: "Looks like she got hit in the face with a shovel several times." Mm. And they knew that was her. There's your news. That seems mean. That is mean. That is mean. The dumb zone new <laughs> life. Whatever. And some mean. She's the one who pulled the gun. <laughs> The they took their money. They didn't really address that part. I'd oh, like look at this kick-ass video open. Damn, wow. son. Is that from Jason? Why did y'all put 1969 on there? It's a big year in history. Uh -huh. and we didn't do this. Jason did. Okay. He's got the dirty mind. I mean, if you know Jason for five minutes. That was a pivotal year in American. You know he loves uh, 69. <laughs> Jason? So today is Tuesday, July 2nd. Mm -hmm. On this day in 1881, President James A. Garfield was shot. Number? 20. Yes. Dang, he still got it. Oh, wow. We have an exclusive photo. <laughs> oh, I'm shot! Garfield would <laughs> die the following September. So we hung on. That's pretty impressive for a hundred and... 40 years ago. July till September. Yeah. Wow. All right, this is where I have trouble with The following, them. like 1882. No, 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 wait. Is yeah. that Mike Reiner? I don't know. Hey, whoa. Is that Heart Attack Man? <laughs> I thought Mike Reiner was dead. <laughs> whoa, what's happening? He has been for years. <laughs> Reiner's dead. I love you, Mike. I love you too. I love you. So Heart much. attack, man. I'm so glad to see you. Maybe you guys could do some Rocktober later. <laughs> <laughs> so weird and not on the phone. Maybe yeah. a little Uriah Heap. <laughs> yeah, a little easy living. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> so on this day in 1937. <laughs> Aviator Amelia Earhart Aviatrice, disappeared. You mean disappeared over the Pacific Ocean while attempting mm -hmm. to make the first round the world flight along the equator. She wouldn't ask for to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> thank you to uh, thank you to the uh, skydiving chief for that Chiron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trademark. <laughs> Let's see here. So she was trying to do the first around the world thing. Uh, anyway, 
Didn't make it. Didn't make oh. it. Never seen again. You know, there are some people that think she was taken prisoner. Really? Yeah, I think so. In Japanese custody. Like, custody. she's possibly still alive? Sure. I don't, don't, yeah, she... <laughs> married to Hitler? She was there with... Argentina? Uh, Injun, or whatever his name is. Well, well, we call them Native Americans, I think. She's kind of uh, an yeah, interesting... Not, not bad. <laughs> not bad yeah. for back then. <laughs> All right, not guys, settle down. Settle down, a, settle down everyone. Get this outfit. <laughs> Yeah, Let's see. old Southwest outfit. On this day in 2002, <laughs> American Steve Fawcett completed the first around-the-world solo flight in a balloon. Uh, he went Australia to Australia, and he probably just so went up. So guy did it in then, a balloon, but a chick did it and got lost. <laughs> in an airport, trip. yeah. 13-day, 19,000-mile trip. How does he? How do you know where you're going in a balloon? How do you know he didn't just <laughs> go up there, float for 13 days, and then land and be like, "Oh yeah, I went around the world." I guess he got all this. Or, sponsored by Bud Light. Yeah, he's sponsored by Bud Light. <laughs> what if you, you just stay awake for 13 days? All you would have to that do. That was my thought. Hear me out. So you just go straight up. You mm-hmm. sit there for 24 hours, and the Earth rotates under you. Aha. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little trick. That sounds See? so boring. Leave it to Mr. Dan to come up with. Man, it rules so hard that Bud Light <laughs> sponsored that. <laughs> yeah, that's when I started. That's so America. Hey, a really cool science thing that we have here. Let's get some domestic lights in there. <laughs> <laughs> On this day in 1982, a man named Larry Walters of San Pedro, California, had a lawn chair equipped with 45 helium-filled weather balloons Sat in it and it rose to an altitude of sixteen thousand feet. Sixteen thousand. He landed eight miles away in Long Beach, California. <laughs> Safely? Apparently so. Larry Walters in a lawn chair. Yeah. <laughs> Was he strapped in? He had to be. Yeah. Oh. Had to be. Back then they didn't have regulations like they do now. Yeah. Right. But Biden's America. <laughs> now right, somebody get into an unstrapped lawn now chair and get talk in, to now me. You can't get in a lawn chair. You can't get in a lawn chair without airbags. That's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the price of lawn chairs. Yeah, and I hear now they're trying to make them electric. Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, and make them making oh. them in Mexico. Look at them go. Right. Look at them go. <laughs> <laughs> it's On this so day funny. in 1996, <laughs> Alex Rodriguez was named to the American League All Star team. Becoming the third youngest player ever selected as an all-star. Who were the other two, Mike Reiner? Who were the two younger players than A-Rod? Baseball Jesus. You got this. So he was uh, 20 years and 11 months old. I'll say Pete Rose and David Clyde. You know that's the dumbest guest you've ever had. Yeah, it is. David Clyde did not. You're just mailing this in. I don't know. Oh, All right. man. Jeez, don't yell at me. It's, uh, <laughs> it's actually... one of them Robin Yunt? Uh, it wasn't Robin Yunt. Um, it was... Nolan. Trout? No, I'm... It had to be pre nineteen ninety six, right? You... Right. Wait, yeah. Dwight Gooden. Ah, uh, okay. And then Ken Griffey Jr. Oh. Those weren't that hard. We're dummies. No, yeah. they weren't. The dumb He just zone. got signed because of his dad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Jake. Uh oh. On this day in twenty thirteen. This is gonna be Ryan Dunn. An Olympic uh, track star. Had her name removed from the Big Ten Female Athlete of the Year following some revelations. Susie Favor Hamilton. That she had worked as a prostitute. Uh, Olympic track star Susie Earth. Favor Hamilton, who would go on to be interviewed by Norm, right? <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> instinctively was going to play it, but I don't want to mess with Yeah, I don't think prostitute. we can play that. Well, we probably can, but yeah, let's not. It's so funny, dude, because TC and I broke it down within the last year, so I went and listened to the whole interview, and if you don't know the story, she you was You and like, I broke it down oh, once. Did yeah. we? Yeah. Okay. No, it was me and you. Okay, yeah. So she was like America's sweetheart. She's from Wisconsin. She was a phenomenal athlete, um, and then somewhere along the line, she got depressed. You were there, right, Blake? And she yeah, we did this. Yeah, I think I did it on both, and she wanted to uh, try a threesome in Vegas with her husband. And another girl, 
Maybe it was another guy. I can't remember. But anyway, she got addicted to sex. Let's ask Tom Gribble. And she became uh, an escort. And so the one threesome got her addicted to sex? Yeah, I think she, I mean, she had a lot of other issues. Okay. She's schizophrenic, and she was in oh. good good spirits when she was on with Norm and was able to tell her story. But it was so weird because mm. Norm was like, she's like, yeah, and you know, I, I, I participated in, you know, sex with multiple partners at the same time. And I swear to you, Norm's like, how many? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Does it hurt? Yeah. It's a fair question. <laughs> it was just. That sounds really dirty. It was like this whole, hey, we're, we're, we're talking about redemption and forgiveness hurt? and grace and how you can, you know, turn your life around. And he's just like, how many dicks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I remember where I was when I was listening to that. It pulled my car over. Did you ever have double penetration? And it was super funny, too, because cause Donovan was like. Uh, let's go back to which one of the races you think is the hardest to win in trials or something. And I'm like, no. Right. No. <laughs> back to the Norm's, Norm's <laughs> effing That's rolling here. That's an amazing ironic note, though. <laughs> yeah. You have two orifices. <laughs> On this day in 2018, rescue divers in Thailand found, I know very well. <laughs> found 12 boys and their soccer coach. Hell yeah. They had been trapped by flooding as they explored a cave a week prior. Yeah. It always seemed really weird, too, I, um, just the whole, hey, I'm 12 boys and a soccer coach in a... Going a little ex exploration, I guess. I don't know. I get what you're saying. Uh, was this the Elon Musk thing? Yes. Yes. I'm going to see if I can find the exact comments he made. We should get one of those kids on. I wonder what they're up to now. I think they're all... Uh, in the year in the Premier League, they're all sex addicted and they become <laughs> prostitutes. I can get one of them for you. I'll just call for uh, information on my new, you know, the the helpline for my new i, uh, my new Mac. So, yeah. So yeah, Elon won a defamation suit that this guy filed against him. The guy who actually, he's like a cave explorer and created the vessel that went in there and saved him. Elon wanted to get there first, and so he called this guy pedo guy. And in court, this actually worked. Pete O'Brien? It was Pete O'Brien, yeah. <laughs> this actually worked. Mr. Musk told the court this week Thank the you. phrase Thank you. pedo guy was common in South Africa where he grew up. Jeez. And he won? Yeah. <laughs> that Elon man got to hand it to him. He I keeps guess. winning. So much winning. <laughs> And on this day in 2020, British socialite Can't handle it. Gislaine Chis Gislaine Maxwell was arrested uh, in New Hampshire on charges she had helped is that, lure. Is that a crossroad with girls. Chisholm Trail? <laughs> she was uh, Jeffrey Epstein's. Yeah, she was a big. Uh, yeah, you go up to Jeffrey Trail and then you go and take the. She was great at recruiting, right? She's a leg. Oh yeah, <laughs> just she wasn't the head coach. Yeah. She was not, but she was very, very involved. And I heard recently she was going to spill the beans on everything she had on Trump or something. But, you know, I've been I've been down El Brillo way before. That's where the house was. And I have been there. He seeked it out. One of the creepiest experiences of my life. Way. I thought that was a euphemism. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. <laughs> no, it's, Mike's getting flashbacks to the 70s. <laughs> I got to say, too, horrible criminal right up my alley. Ghislaine. Ghislaine? Yeah, I don't know. how I've said it, I've heard it said a million different ways. You think she's hot? I do. And a little bit evil? I do. I mean, you she's like British, that? which doesn't help. But Yeah. Yeah. Kind of into it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Powerful. <laughs> like Charlotte Jones. <laughs> Powerful. Yeah. She'd be totally into a three-way. Yeah, I'm like, how old is this kid? <laughs> I don't think so, Ghislaine. Yeah, you'd never be able to satisfy Distancing her, right? from you two. She's always wanting to take it to that next level. Yeah, I don't have that in me. And I'm also not uh, a, cr you know, a criminal, so that could be a... She's a sicko. She would lose interest in you rather quickly. I think so, but I might be able to up my game. You don't know me. You could lead with the whole that's true, I throw don't. cheese thing. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Microwaved a CD once. Mm -hmm. In our famous birthdays, we have Jose Canseco is 60. Oh, former Ranger great. What was he like to cover? 
Um, difficult. He wanted no part of any of it. Were you out in the in the room back mm-hmm. then? I was. Interviewing him? And he wanted no part of any of it. He was far, far too good for him. Because he was a big... He was one of the Bash brothers, man. That was Yes, huge. yes, he was. But Oakland just couldn't he keep was, their free agents? He was at least one of the three most high-toned baseball players of his time. The other two? Uh, Dwight Gooden and... Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Clark? Not even in the conversation. He's got Though a hot good. daughter, too. Jose Canseco, have y'all seen his daughter? got a hot daughter? daughter? Yeah. No. Yeah, she's like all over. She's a big social media gal. Did you just ask me that? Yeah, you know, okay. Just making sure. I was waiting for someone else to say it. <laughs> I figure. Well, okay, but I don't know, Jake. Let's go over to Jake. To Does he? Much Is that yeah, true? 100%. Uh, absolutely. Josie. Yeah. yeah. He's all so over wait, it. So wait, a pro athlete. Yeah. Uh-huh. Probably had like a model that he had this daughter with and then their their kid was hot. <laughs> Here she is at a uh, celebrity softball game with Johnny Manziel. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I was just waiting for it to go there. <laughs> mhm. <sighs> Man. I really wanted the Cowboys to draft him. That would have been I so know, great. bud. Got to let it go. Yeah. There That's Jose go. Canseco's daughter. That's the huh? Canseco daughter? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ozzy Canseco like is 60. I bet, her head. I bet Ozzy Canseco's uh, <laughs> daughter's a root. <laughs> no word on that. <laughs> Derek White is 30. A root. The Celtic? The Celtic. That is a very useful player. Figure skater Johnny Weir, 40. By the way. Uh, Some say gay. Maybe we'll. <laughs> I don't know if there's time to talk about this. Do you find it funny that. The Celtics have now signed three guys to like the largest contracts <laughs> in NBA know. history on the same day that they announced they're selling the team. Yeah, I heard somebody uh, like mentioning – maybe it was like the Hoop Collective was like, yeah, now they'll let the new owner – I didn't get that far in it, but yeah, it's a we'll, great move. We'll take care of the uh, second apron and all yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Weir. I wonder if we have that audio. Why do they call those aprons? Oh, I have all the Johnny Weir audio for sure. You want to hear some? Yeah, whatever. We've already gone long. I don't know. Apron. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm really uncomfortable with that word. The word apron? Yeah. Why? Him. I don't know. I, I think they should use. I think they should use membrane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really uncomfortable with it at all. I was just trying to you set want, somebody up for a joke. You don't want to get into that second membrane. <laughs> That's danger. <laughs> you did it. That's danger. <laughs> How do you spell it? W E I. Right. I'm only I finding just, two things, but I was just looking at it this morning. No, I had a bunch of stuff where he was talking about whether or not he's gay. Well, I did not mean to stop you down, pal. Whether or not. Yeah, it's he's asked about it, and he's very coy. Oh, of course. He can't. What? What? What do you think? You're saying he is? No, she's saying well, how could he ever try to <laughs> try to play yeah, that like he's it. not? Like yeah. he's very, I thought very openly, outwardly. Why would you say that? I don't even <laughs> yeah, understand I don't know. what you're that saying. Pretty masculine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a cross between adamant and uh, 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 I don't know, maybe uh, uh, the guy from uh, Dexy's Midnight Runners. Oh, I don't know those references. I don't know. <laughs> now I can't find it. Okay, it's all it's all good. Uh. Little goody two shoes. <laughs> oh, here we go. For the man is comfortable talking about everything. On the one question everybody wants answered, he reveals nothing. Do you understand that people are always fascinated by whether someone is gay or straight? Yeah. I, I completely understand um, people debating about sexuality uh, for famous people, for athletes, but I am Johnny Weir, and take, take me as that. I don't need to be pigeonholed one way or another, just the same as people don't need to be judged based on, on their race or their gender or things like that. I don't need to be put into a box. I have no box. <laughs> 
Well, I'll believe that. I almost felt like yeah, you got that right. Did I don't want to be pigeonholed. <laughs> Absolutely. But but isn't he somewhat guilty of begging the question? That's coy. He's coy. Bye. He's not gay. That what right there would not fly today. You think? Yeah, dude. You're not you can't just say to somebody like, tell us. You're acting gay, say you're gay. Yeah. <laughs> tell us now. You gotta come out, man. <laughs> You're begging the question, and we have a right to know. Yeah. Of course you don't have a right to know. Actually, the gay people would make him do it. <laughs> Seriously. You're probably what, right. Are you not proud to be gay? What the hell's wrong with you, John? Yeah. Queer? Disown him. Probably true. On, uh, Brett, the hitman heart is 67. Oh, man. The sharp. I can't tell you how many times I put my brother in the sharpshooter. I don't know what that is. I'm well, proud to not know that. I'm proud of that. The That's shirt. it's a it's a super solid finishing move that works really well on an eight year old. <laughs> nice. It sounds <laughs> knuckles, bro. Pedo ish. Man, I'm gonna put <laughs> a distance from that. <laughs> if we just mark that and play it alone, <laughs> Brandel. <laughs> He's actually physically distant. <laughs> <laughs> Brandel Chambly is sixty two. Golf man. Golf yeah. channel. Longhorn. Definitely. SEC guy. Wasn't he super Little. pissed about <laughs> Liv? Yes. Yeah. I remember we played some of his stuff where he was real mad. Was he the one that went off to die? No. No. I'm ready. That no, was that's, Nick Faldo. That's Nick Faldo, oh. yeah. He didn't go off to die. He went to Montana. Which and then he was on like the next ready. broadcast. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Ready. Scott Aukerman is 58. I like him. I saw a clip of his this morning. He's from Mr. Show and Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, let's see. Catherine Irby is 58. I only bring her up. She was on Oz. Do we have two Oz? What was her? Um, and Law who, and Order. Who did she play? She. Uh, she was a prisoner on death row. But <sighs> we had her on once when you I was out at the... Yeah, I can see it, but I don't recognize Not ringing the bell? No. Larry David is 77. Greatness. You watched the final season? Um, No, not yet. I haven't. Yeah. I'm, 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 I haven't, I'm watching the whole thing all over again. Oh, okay. That's what I got going I thought now. about doing that. Nice. I went final it's season. It's good. It holds final up, man. Final season's great. That's where, um, so recently, who was complaining? Oh, Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Was like, oh, you can't be funny nowadays. You can't do funny things. The PC police and everybody's like, you know, the Larry David show's on right now. Yeah, and you can <laughs> absolutely be really funny and don't care about the PC police. Jerry Hall is sixty-eight. Oh, Whoa. yeah, Mick Jagger plowed through that. As did Rupert Murdoch. So did, as did Brian Ferry. Congratulations to all of them. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just consider how weird it is that that's a the, magical home base. The lead singer of one of the most influential and I would say in their time viewed as somewhat I know they were huge but counterculturally I guess the Rolling Stones. Roxy Music, you mean? Their lead singer <laughs> was married to a lady. That was for you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Who then ended up Love marrying the guy who created, like, the most evil news empire of all time. This isn't weird to anybody else? Yeah, no. I can yeah, see you, Big Jagger, is about as far to the left you can get. It's it's weird, but it's understandable. It's like funny. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, it turns out she doesn't care about any of their views. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but it's not <laughs> totally incomprehensible. Because they're just it's rich people doing rich people yes. stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're simple yeah. creatures, really. They're staying in their own Just economic kidding. demographic. Going to the Hamptons. Rock mm -hmm. musician Dave Parsons is 59. His band, I once saw them open for Tool. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I've known a few bands that toured with Tool. <laughs> he can't even do it. He can't even do it. What was corn? <laughs> well, now corn would play, well, but 
It would kind of be on a side stage with Hole. <laughs> yeah, Hole would open for corn. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Bush would open for Tool. And Dave Parsons uh. was uh, in Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan oh, is 38. <laughs> Make Bushes great again. Dude, I'm telling you. I'm proud of her. So, so Dave Parsons. But Dave Bush. I'm, yeah. Was, there was a time when she was like a full on junkie. Such an old photo, right? No, have you seen her lately? She is cleaned up and looking great, and she's confident. A lot of lip filler. Okay, well, <laughs> look out that window, as he would say. <laughs> That's not a... I like the filler lips. If we're going to start taking <laughs> shots at lip filler, then be a whole lot of women. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of problems. Yeah. Big lip filler apologist over here. No, I I'm see. just saying. I mean, it's, it seems like... Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to say Margot it. Robbie is 34. She's pretty fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. Is that the daughter of Joe Robbie? No, she is hot. I will admit hot when I see hot. <laughs> no, she's not the daughter of Joe Robbie. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair question. He's Barbie. She's Barbie. I never saw Barbie. Never. Or Oppenheimer. Too, she's, whatever she's had done, if anything, it's the perfect amount. She doesn't look too fake. I thought I need to see Barbie and Oppen Oppenheimer at the same time. She was great in Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And listen to Pink Floyd's uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Right. I think. Yes, and, let's uh, do it Wolf backwards while stoned and tripping. The boobs one, is that why you're saying that? No, I just thought she was a good actress. That was a, is that where she showed her boobs, though? I do not recall. I think it is. Because that was like her first movie, really. Her big role, first big role. Got to make a splash. Mm -hmm. You're the one who remembered that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And I'll just mention this because it's on my list. Paul Valamides is uh, 32. He is the uh, intern who would update our birthday list. I remember I him. Yeah. Great dude. I believe he might have been the nephew of my assistant principal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's a completely useless Not note. interesting at all. <laughs> no. Nope. Really did nothing to advance it the conversation. Random, That's all right. Possibly I, even it is it random, and I, and I support that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Could have uh, Thanks, stopped man. on the momentum of the whole show, really, now you think about it. <laughs> Born on this day, now dead, Thurgood Marshall. Ah, uh, the former su Supreme Court <laughs> Justice. <laughs> and Dave Thomas. Of Wendy's? Of the Square Burger? <laughs> Who founded Wendy's, yeah. Nice. Damn, That's what nice, made Mike. the burger so good right now. square. And then it'll stick out over the edges of the bun. And then yeah. you could eat those little four parts first. I mean, I, I I told you guys about this on the show, but that is a fascinating story to read about. Is it really? Yeah, they found themselves, you know, squarely in third behind the big no two. No pun intended. Yeah, and they needed a bit. And their point was, look, you're not getting as much meat with these other two companies because they're just putting this big-ass bun on it. So that's where we got Where's the Beef? We already have Flame Broiled versus... The King. Fried or whatever, yeah. yeah. Like, so... I mean, we tried Flame Broiled. Yeah. Made me like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pro Wendy's. I love it. I, I don't try not to go. But oh, it's second I love it. tier. Second Wendy's? tier fast food, yeah. No. Although they did just get a berry frosty flavor. They have a new frosty flavor, which I feel like hasn't happened in my whole lifetime. It's the only orange been, cream one? It's only been chocolate. Frosties. The 99 cent frosties? Mm. They yeah. now have berry. They have vanilla. Yeah, they've always had vanilla. Have they? Oh, I don't yeah. think they I have. didn't know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've but, had vanilla. Sure. Well, then they don't have chocolate. One of them they don't Julie have. Julie doesn't know shit. I don't know. <laughs> I've got a kid that likes vanilla and can never get vanilla, so I feel like I know this. I don't know. Check back with me after Damn. we after gotta, you try to go and get a vanilla. Tell me uh, how okay. it goes. I might be getting a Wendy's burger on the way home. <laughs> uh, oh. What is a salad night at home? I don't even care, but probably. <laughs> dead on the stay, still dead. <laughs> Nostradamus died on this day in 1566. BS. And you think everything about Nostradamus is BS? No, I think, well, of course, yes. But I think trying to say birthdays and stuff from the 16th century, it's just, or death days, it's just, there's no way. I'm kind of with you. Yeah. Um, also died on this day in 1994, Andres Escobar, soccer player. Yeah, this is a wild one, man. Says here, murdered because he scored an own goal. Oh, no. Yeah, this is like 
a top three weird like Columbia sports or story. something. Yeah. Yeah. That's terrible. The cartel didn't take that kind of thing very well at all. No. It's a great ESPN documentary or thirty for thirty on that. Funny. Hilarious. Knee slapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was today in history. This is really funny. This part is funny. After Escobar's death, his family founded the Andres Escobar Project to help disadvantaged children learn to play football. And I think they started with, kick it fucking that way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do. Whatever uh, you do, don't kick it into your own goal. You obviously haven't had a child score an own goal yet. Because it does oh, I happen. Know, but in Colombia. It does happen. Feel, I, and it's awkward I've seen as hell. It. I've seen All it. All the parents look at you and you're like, I'm sorry. I've seen it. I swear I tell them how to play. But I'm just saying, down just there. Wait. Then you get introduced to the concept of the Colombian necktie. You get the necktie. <laughs> we can work on passing in month two. For now, <laughs> that way. Yes, rule number one. Yeah. That way. <laughs> Who gets to handle the remarks? Anybody? Nobody? Somebody? You got to keep it oot. <laughs> yeah, we usually like to get some closing remarks at this time. That's the end of the show. But often people will have their remarks uh, prepared because they've been waiting to be on the show, and you don't care. You don't even care that you're here. <laughs> you're look at him. You you're non plus. Were well, you talking to me? <laughs> That's yeah. a perfect cut. <laughs> I didn't know that this was going to fall to me today. I know we should have prepped uh, with closing remarks. You got anything you want to say? Anything you want to get off your chest? Review the show, William Pace. Your ample chest. Um, I would say that uh, this was we very good. You, you guys have a very good thing going here. I like it. Mm. What well, you're supposed to say? Thank you. Oh yeah. Fuck? Okay. No. Yeah. I, I didn't know well, it was done. that's not good enough for you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. The whole thing sucks, man. <laughs> that's what we usually out. here. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> that's all we need. That's what we need. How about you, JD? No. Oh, oh just in the show right there. Oh, video man done that's for the day. Right. It's good. <laughs> Saved by the bell. Oh, okay. So are we done? Live four guys. Like, yeah, all right. Adios, well. mofos. Huh? Adios, mofo. Oh.